folks. Hello. Welcome to our podcast. Knitting a Good Yarn. My name is Jackie. I'm Carmen. And we're coming to you from Southern Ontario. And this is a chatty, mm -hmm. nitty, nitty, fibery, hopefully less barky today podcast. podcast. <laughs> we've made some we've, we've switched some some things up for various yeah. reasons yeah lily hasn't we should, but lily couldn't make it today that doesn't yeah. mean she's not going to be back but we're going to try a two dog household um on a day that's not a public holiday when people are coming and going yes. and giving the dogs something to comment on yes um so fingers and nobody crossed is supposed to be going into my back room <laughs> like the last time when there were two people yeah so we shall see um, so but pizza is still pizza at the end of the day. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We'll do our best. Yeah. Um, so thank you for those of you who had suggestions for us around sort of like sound and editing and fingers crossed today will be a day where, um, the barking will not significantly impact your viewing pleasure capacity ability. So, um, thank you, you for coming what, back we're already better than last episode because they have already barked <laughs> by this true. point. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Um, so, what are we doing today? We are, it's going to be the Jackie Show. <laughs> it often is, but it's extra the Jackie Show because we were just talking earlier about like, I've just got stuff going on in, in this September and all of this, like I have, I've only been able to finish one thing. Okay, but you, but you epic. did an epic, you finished an epic project. It was an epic undertaking. Oh, like, Do you want to start with yours? Oh. I didn't interrupt it. Sure. Okay, let's start with yours. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, because we can combine yeah. it. Oh, it's a little bit damp still. Oh, yeah, probably. So to set it up, <clears throat> if you want, if you're new, if you're new here, welcome. Welcome. So glad to have you. <laughs> if you've been with us, you know that we've been. We're going to Rhinebeck for the first time. This is happening in less than a week now. In a week from now. We will be, we'll be at Rhinebeck. At New York Street we will Wool. be... Is today Friday? Friday. We'll be at Woolen Folk. I was going to say, Yeah. I don't know where we'll be. We're <laughs> on something because there's a whole itinerary that I have no idea. But we are going to be there. We're so excited. And we both decided when Andrea Mowry came out with her, like... So Andrea Mowry from Drea Renee Knits, um, I'm sure you know this, but she does every year a Rhinebeck sweater and, like, pattern that she creates. And... Uh, <laughs> And if you make it and you're at Rhinebeck, <laughs> you get to go and meet up with Andrea on this hill that I don't know what that the means. The famed hill. I don't know what that a means hill either. That we're going to get to go do. So we planned this. That came out what? In July. 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 Who, which one of us casted that <laughs> on right away? Yeah. So I already knew she was going to have it done. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do And we wanted to do. Yeah. So anyway. I wanted to do this. It was going to be our own hand spun stuff. So like really it needed some time. <laughs> so when did I cast it on? Did I even have it casted on? No, no our last podcast. So our last podcast, which was maybe like a month plus ago, um, you had fiber oh, and yeah. you had. I thought I had fiber. Your main color. Yes. You had your fiber, you had your main color. And then you were like auditioning the fluffs. Because for those of you who um, are not familiar with the tessellated pull pullover, the tessellated vest, it's a sort of three color pattern. There's a color changing yarn, a fluffy yarn, and then a main color. So yes. you'd had two of three. I ha I thought I had two of three. Yes. yes. You thought you had two of three. Because I had, I had two of three. I had spun, but didn't read the pattern oh, that's before right. I spun it. <laughs> so I made it thicker than it should be. Yeah. So then luckily I had actually bought two... Okay, two Bats. braids. Braids. Two braids of fiber. Um, yeah, of the fiber. So I actually had to re-spin that one to make it thinner. And then I'll show you. I think I might have in my second skein, I mixed them up. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't keep them separate. I really well. <laughs> would like to take a moment. Like, if I, if we had all the time in the world or if we edited, I would go back on my phone to actually mark the date that you started actually working on it. Because what I remember is that, like, we were on the podcast, you, we were super excited, and then I messaged you, like, I don't know, like a week later, and I was like, how's it going? And you were like, yeah, have it started yet? Like, it was like, I was like, Carmen, like, Red Bank is in, like, less than a month. It's ridiculous. And although we 
don't have to do the tessellated thing. You could show up, in fact, with your swatch or with a tiny segment. Like, we had our little plan of like a little <laughs> bando top. Um, this is leaving it incredibly late. However, yeah. what, well, <laughs> so at that point too, I was like, I think I'm going to do the pullover because Jackie's doing the pullover and I'm going to use it more and blah, 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 blah. So that was all my feelings of, of things. Um, I don't you love, I had like the longest setups ever. Like it's like, just context show me the picture. so important though. I, we're here for the context. Oh my God. If you remember, and if you watched last time, I also had different fluff I was auditioning. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. But they haven't really barked yet. Just girls. We're not going to count it. <laughs> so, um, one of the options was a pink, mm -hmm. which is so funny. I just then abandoned. And got all caught up with my like love as always for Melissa and her Sonder yarn. And I was like, well, it's going to be Sonder yarn. So then I was talking with her. Oh, I should have brought it, but uh, about like color choices. And she's just a color genius. Anyway, I was between, I, I, so I was really thinking of a pink. Um, and then she had this other option of like this maple, like Arab, like, oh, Ooh. to pull it. It was very beautiful. And if I didn't, hate knitting this so much I could I would think about <laughs> doing it again doing it with that because it was really beautiful we tell the truth here we do. this is a truth telling podcast <laughs> my god um anyway I ended up going with the pink so but then I was like I wanted sweet pea so I had to wait for that to come sweet pea is uh that pink that I did my um Fleur shawl, Fleur shawl. The OG Fleur shawl yes. with low mileage wool. But that was mohair, and so this needed Surrey, and so then I was waiting for that, and then afterwards I laughed, and I was like, I have actually should go. I want to like compare the two pinks because I forgot that I already had a pink. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have a vision, you have a vision. It's the way that creativity flows. Ah, so anyway, yeah. So this is why it didn't. It took a long, 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 long long time it takes me a long long time to even show it ready but this is what we ended up with <laughs> yeah there you go god it's so beautiful it i know the coveting is real you know the coveting is real it is nice it's <laughs> I'm torn. Okay. Okay, this tell me how been... you actually feel better. <laughs> <laughs> you remember my like Chrysler top and I was like, this better effing fit. <laughs> because it's so annoying. This is the this is one of those. It's like it better really be good. Um I finished this unfortunately yesterday. <laughs> so and I wanted I don't oh, thank you. Yeah. It was a feat. But oh uh, so I was trying to get it done. I was actually up until 11.30 on the Wednesday night because I was just like, I need to get this thing done so I can block it so that I can wear it here, but then I couldn't. So anyway. Um, so let's talk about construction for a second. Please. Okay, so it's a bottom-up pattern, right? Yes. So you do a form of ribbing. Ye oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, people. So just to, yes. <laughs> if we rewind, remember I was going to do the pullover. Pull over. Well, the pullover and the vest look very similar. There's very similar things you think you can just like swap out, swap them, but actually they're not. Um, so, so you cast on for the pullover. I cast on for the pullover, which is two by two ribbing and three inches. Uh huh. In the actual pattern, it's actually only like a. It's the same. Actually, it's even less than this. It's only like I think it's like an inch or something. In the vest. In the vest. Okay. It should be an inch, and it should be one by one. Okay. Ribbing. And then. The number of stitches, funny enough, they were <laughs> still no bark. The pitter patter. Nine minutes. Of little puppies. Um, yes. So what was I just saying? Oh yeah. The oh pattern. yeah. The stitch number. So funny enough, it was the same stitch number, but it was a different size. So I was knitting the two, size two in the pullover was actually the size three in, in the, the vest. Okay. And the gauge was a little different. Oh, I don't know. Really? I mean, it didn't matter. I wasn't going to do anything with gauge anyway. So I just want to know, okay, we're like, I'm imagining you and you're like, look at me doing my ribbing. At what point did you decide I'm switching to the vest? Not until here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was, sorry. I interrupted you. No, it's always. Go right ahead. <laughs> I never have a clear thought. So I always do it. Yeah, so I I was, I was really like, I'm going to keep doing the pullover. But I will say, 
my yardage, you know, with hand spun, you think you have a certain amount, but it's hard to know, right? Yeah. So I was going, I don't even know. Like, as I was getting up here, like how much, if I was going to be able to make it all the way through here and then down sleeves. Right. So a few things, I mean, time-wise, annoyance-wise, <laughs> all of that was like, just get this thing done. And another piece of it, I'm, I'm just going to give it to you. It's beautiful, but just tell you, I'm just going to tell you the whole deal. Yeah. You, because it's, so it's mosaic knitting, which is, that's great, right? Like you're not like carrying things. Your brothers. It's like having tiny gremlins in the house. I know, what the problem is? Lily's not even here, why are they fighting? Guys, <laughs> excuse me. They still haven't burped. I'm just gonna say that. I don't kind of like their gremlin sounds. I, I actually do enjoy it when they go. Really they, do, they do. They chase wow. each other. I'm like, yeah, that that's only that's only Frisco. Oh, He's the one making Frisco that. Making that's that Frisco. Pizza's the one trying to instigate and make Frisco run after him. So Pizza's not chasing Frisco. Pizza's trying to bite Frisco's beard and then running away. And then Frisco runs after. Like it's really cute. Completely. Like come. And then he'll like or. Frisco will be sitting with me in the chair and then Pizza will jump off and suddenly be like, oh. <laughs> like look at him like, come on. And then I go, go get him. And then they go. And then they go. Hey, Frisky. Yes. Sorry, a little, little foray into life, <laughs> life here. <laughs> Dog life. Okay. So. So it's mosaic knitting. So you don't have to be carrying your things each time. But you've got three, three strings with you. Yarn management is for real. The number of times I had to like un unwind them, untangle. untangle them, yeah, like it just takes so much longer. And when you're under a time crunch, that's not very, <laughs> that is stressful and infuriating. Should I put it on? Do you want it? Anyway. Oh, before I put it on, okay. Okay, so you, you, you switch to the yes. vest, and so your vest, you're now one size larger than you planned compared mm -hmm. to the pullover. Yep. <laughs> Other things I had to do differently was because it was one by one ribbing, but I had already done two by two. I was like, I'll do two by two ribbing okay. here. And then I also made these a little bit long, like they're a little bit wider than they should. Like the be. rib? You did more. Yeah, I, it was the longer. Rib. So I will, when I try it on, I'm just, I will see, like once it's blocked, because it does grow, which we're going to talk about in a second, yeah. but I, I figured I'll knit it larger because it's easier to just take out than to have to add, right? Like. So when you say that you made it longer, you mean the uh, the depth of the arm or no, the ribbing? The ribbing. Like the ribbing, the edging. And actually I did make the ribbing, I didn't pick up as many stitches as she recommended. Recommended, okay. So what we want to show here, I don't feel like you were quite, like the camera's not able to pick it up so easily, but this <gasps> is looking color. way better. Oh, these things are driving me crazy. I have to just pull them in a little, they're a little, oh, these ones, I mean, a little less. Anyway. <laughs> Distraction, carbon. Um, this is looking nice now. You're coming around to it, aren't you? I am. Well, coming. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. It's I okay. Hope. In one week, you'll forget how much you hated the process of Fair. making this. You'll be so happy to have your vest yeah. as you rock up to the hill, and everyone's like, oh, "Look at this amazing colors!" And they're gonna ask you what color of spin cycle you made, you used, and you're like, "It's not spin cycle. It's my oh. hands, but." So anyone out there, please do one please of these things so that we can feel really good at our stuff about it. So this is not what it looks like when you knit it, though. It's not. Would you like to see what it looks like? So for any of you who are thinking about making the pattern, and I, I mean, I'll give my thoughts on, on the pullover. I think this is a pattern that A, is not to be done on a time crunch. <laughs> Not recommended. Not recommended. Most things are. <laughs> <laughs> but like, especially this not this not. pattern. And B, it's a pattern that, um, please swatch. <laughs> please swatch. Please swatch for the pattern. If I could go back and talk to my former self, I would have been, it would have been much more pleasant a process if I had swatched. Because there's something about this pattern oh, stop it. that you can see so if you look at this side, there's something about this pattern that blocking significantly changes it. And I felt like as I was knitting it, I was like, the yarn looks almost strangled. 
Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't know if you can appreciate. It just feels see. like everything's super tight, and I was I couldn't see the differences in my hand spun. Like I was like, it just looks like a big it and the texture of it. And so, like for me in my process, I was like really doubting my yarn choice and really doubting yeah. like my needle size because I was like, it just feels so unhappy it's like yes. it's like a bramble it's like a it feels like a bramble it feels super stiff as you're knitting it and this of course is like our this of course is um with our yarn choices and our needle sizes um but the moment that you block it everything changes and so we're not the only ones who have been knitting this pattern we have a couple of friends um who are also knitting it mm -hmm. and i actually that's not fair I feel like at some point during the dating process, everyone kind of does this, like throws their hands up in the air and is doing something like, oh my gosh, this is taking a very long time and or like, doesn't even look good. you're not sure about it. Mm -hmm. Like, even though you like love your color choice, like as you start knitting it, I don't know. I was just like, this is not looking the way that I thought it was going to look Yes, because it just seemed really tight. Yes. But then you block it. I don't know. Can we and this, this is just steam. This block. is just steam. Like, this is going like, to get even better, I think. Can, how can we show both side by side? Hang on, let me see. But then when you block it, something absolutely magical happens. Oh, look at you, smarty pants. See? I mean, I yeah, don't know if I you, think can, you can I, see it. I, I think, think you, you can, can see it, see it a little it's bit. It's just a bunch of just kind of spots. It's like, whereas this, you can see the you, line. It opens up so beautifully. Yeah. The fabric, there's something about, you know, um, it's mosaic. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's something different about the quality of the fabric that ha that is made in mosaic knitting that's different from stranded color work. Yes. And I think Andrew Mallory's absolute genius of sort of putting together three different textures yes. of yarn. It makes the most amazing fabric. It's so unique. After you block it. It really is. And I will say it's so odd to be knitting with like a sport weight and then a single strand of Surrey, like fluff. like I felt like yeah. I needed to like double up on the Surrey, but I didn't. Right. But it feels like you should because it's so thin in comparison to the one that you're knitting right beside it. But yeah, like if you look weird. at the floats, you can really see sort of the difference in the yeah. the thickness of the different Especially yarns. Especially because I told you I might have oh, yeah. been using like a DK near the end. Um, but. I think this is like for me. This was de this is definitely a product knit. Yes. And I and I I feel like there's a there's a there's like this critical point like I was asking you like when did you um switch the vest because I feel like for, for me it was like really exciting <laughs> until like here yeah and yeah. then after that I feel like my curiosity around like what does it what's it gonna look like and yes, um, how's and it gonna feel and, and the concerns like I don't know like y y you you get over that like initial excitement or like the initial excitement of like yeah. what's this going to be like is like satisfied but then you <laughs> have the like, whole rest of the thing to do long. <laughs> so it's a long, long it's a long haul. thing but mm. are, are you glad you knit it now that it's like almost done we haven't fully blocked it you haven't really tried so. it on yet yeah i have to like try it on i think like i have tried it on and i can throw we can throw it on look at he was falling asleep he's just a darling he's like so, he's a little soft. for new people He's less less than two years old. He's a rescue. We have had him well since January, so you'd think yeah. he'd be a little calmer by now. But he's a sweetheart. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me throw it on and just see. And as I say, like the the sizing and stuff, we'll have to find out. We'll have to find out. Yeah. Whatever. So <clears throat> we did a steam block of just the front, right? Um, mostly right because Carmen was me feeling very despondent. And I was like, <laughs> I remember the despondent feeling. I'm bringing a steamer and I'm going to steam the front of it. And mm -hmm. And I watched the magic of it just extending. Open, open up. And it's just going to even do even more with the, with the, it's a like, wet block. A I don't know if you can see this. Look at the, oh, it's not really coming, but significant difference in the length. Like that's the back. Yeah. So it grew. Because it grew and grew and grew. And so here's where if you were responsible and then around like Carmen and I, and you did a gauge swatch, um, I would recommend you knit your gauge. Oh my God. It's so it's so cute. It's so cute. Oh my god. I, this is the piece I'm wondering. Is it too wide? Well, 
the two. Well, ones. are you intending on wearing it at like right now? It's like a tank, which some people have done. I kind of like it as a or tank. are you intending to wear it over things? Because when I oh. look at this, uh, like to me, it's just such a great layering piece, especially for someone mm -hmm. like you who has like a whole collection of button downs. Yes. Like I just feel like That's over a button my down work is so good. Look too. Like my work look is usually like actually like jeans, dark denim. Yeah. This preppy. It's so cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the color is so good. I do like it. It's just perfection. I think it's perfection. But I understand like it, it's been many, it's been many, many hours of like, it's oh my God, hours. the tessellated. Yes. I'd have to try it with something. With something. This is my question mark is whether I should just bring this in a little bit. Like, um, it's a little rip over out my some shoulders. of the ribbing so that it's yeah. like Yeah, because it was supposed this. to be yeah, just slightly thinner. It and then I would nicer, do it with it? this one. Yeah, maybe. We'd love to know your input. Leave it or bring it in just a little. Huh. Are you right. happy with the color choice now? Yes. Yeah. What I would be, I, I like the colors. Okay, one thing I was also worried about when I was first starting it mm. is that the colors were very similar to um, my Barren Lands sweater mm -hmm. that I'd made. And I was like, am I just making the same thing? But it actually did end up being very different looking. So I'm happy about that. What I wish maybe, what I like about Andrea's version is that, and Spin Cycle, because it has longer colors, like color changes, mm -hmm. you, you get kind of a line, you can see sort of the background moving. Whereas here, okay. you can see it's different, but it's not like different in a You don't get like a clear. gradient. Yeah. There's a gradient effect that happens with spin cycle. Yeah. That I think can be achieved with hands, but I think it can be done. Oh yeah. You just have to do like planning. You have to do you planning. You have to like plan. And it was, like actually it's the one, it's the, it was the braid that I had. That was the problem mm -hmm. because it was a braid that had, um, it was mostly the teal and then it just had a few splotches of yeah. like, it's like a, it was the like a rust. tonal braid as opposed to a variegated braid. It didn't right? have enough changing, and I could tell as I was spinning it. I was like, Ugh. it's not gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really wanted to do it, and I really liked how it. I like the colors together. The colors are so good. It is very nice. It's gonna. It's a beautiful fall vest. It's such a beautiful vest. And the I feel like it's good. something. I feel like it, you don't have anything like this. Is something that that you haven't I didn't need yet. a vest before. No, I've always no. wanted to because I'm a, I like vests. You like vests. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> so. That's, that's the vest. That's the vest. Now, you're probably going, but what does the pullover look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in love. Great segue. Great segue. <laughs> I'm a pro, Jackie. We've been doing this for a year and a half. We've been doing this for over a year. We know how to transit. Transfer. Uh, okay, so this oh, is my version of the tessellated look at pullover. This. Fully blocked. Fully blocked. Wet yep. blocked. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, oh, I nice. also have some qualms about it, but I won't do the thing that all of us knitters do, which is like, look at my sweater and let me show you all the flaws. <laughs> let me like talk about it first. Um, so I knit the size one and my yarn choices. Oh, we didn't talk about your yarn choices. Oh, yeah. So this was blacker <laughs> yarns. Don't know the color. The no, other one in the show notes. Oh, if you're new, if you're new oh, yeah. here, um, we don't uh, edit and we don't um, put you know the little like thing that's Blink, like things. says this is the designer. However, what we do do is we have show notes. So if you um, hit the down bar, um, everything, uh, all the like specs about the sweaters um, or the things that we knit, um, we'll put in the show notes, including stuff that we can't remember right now, but. Yes. Um, like which is going to be everything that I there will about. be details um yes. there and also in our Ravelry group um and all of our like social and our Ravelry and all that kind of stuff is down there so if you want like actual information <laughs> it'll, be <there. laughs> it'll be there um blacker yarn blacker yarns um uh my hand spun was from this amazing store you can go back um last episode, last episode yeah. yeah uh I talk all about it because I'm totally blanking on the store's name uh but it was in Alkmaar Netherlands Colchis. Oh God, how do you do this? She wasn't even there. 
Man, amazing. That's why I remember. Yeah. So Lena, uh, so that that's where I go. So I bought the blacker yarns there, and then this like hand, um, then some butter. Which was Romney, right? Which was Romney. Yeah. And then of course my sweet pea, um, Surrey from Sonder. Sonder. Yeah. There's me. There's you. So um, this I knit out of um, two colorways of Newton and yarn. Mm -hmm. The main color um, is a color called Solvanda. It's kind of the, um, I don't know what would you call this. Okay like gr tan. tan gray. Yeah. Um, so that was my main color. My contrast, my color changing color, which I feel like you can't see, but I swear is there. You can see it. <laughs> you can see it. Um, was hand spun. Um, and this was a two ply of a merino linen flax and 100% Gotland um, in this. Can I just color. say, I just, I just really want to draw attention to Jackie's commitment to low yeah. contrast. <laughs> Would I, would any of you choose, oh yeah, you don't even have it, like. I do, I do. It's oh, you have it there, because you variegated, though, like. I did, I changed the ribbing. Do we have so anywhere here's a that good we can spot see really what Solvanda looks like? like? Here. Oh, okay, oh, right, okay. Yeah. Like, look, yeah. <laughs> those are, those are quite close. They're super close. They're super close. I don't know what I was thinking, Wait, except that I, like I don't it. know. It's so right. I, I knit it um, bottom up, and um, I decided that. I wanted to do corrugated ribbing um, because I knew I was going low contrast and I was like the corrugated ribbing is going to give the hand spun like the changing nature of the hand spun yes. an opportunity to shine. Um, I also because I'm more petite feel sometimes with a um, like a really deep rib mm -hmm. that's solid that it kind of like chops me in half in a way that like I don't oh, feel comfortable with I in see. terms of like proportions for something that's cropped. It's like I don't know, I think because I'm more petite, it, uh, the ribbing should be like shorter in order for it to look. Anyway, gotcha. um, so I have a bit of a thing around that. So this is my way around it. And I wanted to show off the, the hand spun, which I think you can see here. You can see actually. That it seems, like when I did this, I was like, oh, the contrast is totally like enough. Like it, it does is look low. better. I think this is what I, like it's almost like I wish we had Solvanda here. Like, so you could see that she'd be holding these two things up going. Yeah. Yeah, and it work. seemed like it would work. Um, and I, feel like... I did do that in one of the other episodes, but I oh, that's didn't true. anyhow. Um, so it's like super low contrast. So this is my contrast color. And then my um, fluff, I held one strand of um, Newtidin in the colorway Fleeceline with mm. um, mohair from Sonder Yarn Co. And this is the, oh, I always confuse, glass. Oh. Glass. Um, which is just absolutely <laughs> glorious. Um, so the modifications that I made. Okay, so there, there's two things that I learned from this this process. And I'm trying to like rack my brain. I'm like, have I knit an Andrea Mowry sweater before? And I think this might be my first Andrea no, Mowry. No, can't be. Which is totally that confusing to me. Be. I think it is though. Like, like, and I don't know how I've gone this long as a knitter without knitting an Andrea Mowry garment. Like, I'm so confused. By this but Me I think too. this might be the first one wow um so things that I learned try another one <laughs> <laughs> don't what? have this be her like her <laughs> my only um her evaluation of Andrew Mowry <laughs> one is like trust Andrea yeah because I remember yeah. when I when I opened it um a lot of the sizing decisions that I make about my garments is based on like taking a garment that I like Yes. and measuring out the like proportion so rather than you know like of course I have a sense of what my full bust size is and I have a sense of like how much ease I want but generally speaking at this point what I do is rather than thinking about that I look at the pattern and I look at the construction and I think how do I want this to fit and then I think have I made a garment or do I have store-bought garment that has a similar fit mm. and then I go about and I measure that and then I just go into the pattern and choose that size as opposed that to like sense. choosing on the basis of like, Smart. I don't do bust and ease math, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, what was I gonna say? Anyhow, so I looked at the schematic and the dimensions that um, Andrea put, and I measured them out, and then I like laid out two garments that I had that are like cropped and a similar, <clears throat> just like a similar fit that I was looking for, like like boxy body and then tight Shoulder. sleeves. Yep. And I was measuring it, I'm like, these do not make any sense to me, like in, in terms of like what I think the dimensions should be and right. what Andrea thinks the dimensions should be. So I provisionally cast on 
Um, I provisionally cast on, I folks. knit the uh, ribbing downwards because it's bottom up. I'm a top down knitter and I was like proportion. I feel like proportion is everything when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I want it, so I knit the ribbing and I was like in the pattern, I think she says, was it three inches? Yes. Like it's a deep ribbing and I was it's like, nah, ribbing. like, like that's too much ribbing. And so I like knit half of it and then just like put it on waist yarn and then started to knit the body. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the end, I ended up with exactly the proportions that Andrew Mowry That's um, said. Like said, like I ended up having to go back and extend the ribbing, <laughs> um, and the body length is exactly what she has in the pattern. Oh. Um, but I did make one modification, which is the the top part. So in the pattern for size one, um, they she tells you to knit to a certain like length, and I love this about Andrew Mowry's patterns. Is like yes, there's gauge. Um, but sort of every instruction comes as an, either a number of rows and a, uh, a length, yes. right? So it, like, instead of saying like knit 30 rows, she'll yeah. be like knit until this, this, um, size. this, this many inches or this yes. many centimeters, which I feel like is really um, lovely for sort of customizing fit. So the one modification that I made is that I knit this, um, top part. So you knit in the round and then you end up splitting for like front and back and um, casting on some stitches to make the drop shoulder, which is a new... Oh, they cast on stitches. You cast to make on that. stitches yeah. to make the drop shoulder, which I think is absolutely, Andrew Mowry is a genius. Yes. So I ended up um, knitting significantly more on this top part. So if you look right. at yours, Carmen, like, like it sits fairly low oh. down. Like if you were to pull it down, yeah it's it's like a it's like a crew yeah. and I don't know if that's because the vest has a different sort of um construction than the pullover but mm -hmm. I knit an extra three and a half inches because I uh, wanted this to kind of sit up here as opposed to when I looked um when I looked at some of the photos of the testers particularly in the smaller sizes I noticed that like the neckline was like Yes. down and I knew that because it was cropped I kind of wanted it up so that's the only that's modification smart. that I made um everything else I knit exactly to pattern so there was the ribbing there was that and this and so like that's the thing that I learned is like trust Andrew Mowry and her dimensions and I think my extending it is really actually more not a comment on her pattern designing um more comment on like just the proportion of my body. Yeah. Like because what like I realized is like, even if I'm knitting a raglan, I always have to knit a longer raglan. Yes. Because it's like this dimension from like, I don't know, like my yes. armpit to the top of my shoulder is longer. Yes. Than like whatever they use as a standard. Yes. And I think sort of I have thing. the opposite. Like I or often have shorter. to shorten it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I like a deep raglan, so mm -hmm. there's like two True. pieces there. But mm -hmm. I think if I had, um, I really do believe that if I had knit it to pattern with the dimensions that she offered, like I don't know if the sleeve would have been large enough for me. Right? Like gotcha. if you look at it right now, it's right. pretty close. It's really lovely. Right? Um, But it's beautiful. Today, I'm like okay with it. Okay with it? I mean... <laughs> It's pretty gorgeous. I feel like this is the kind of thing that, like, if you were walking along, it somebody would be like, where did you buy that? For it just felt like it took forever. It really it felt did. like it took forever. And it didn't just feel like it, I think, you know, objectively. Like, I, I loved in the round, and then knitting flat was like, I didn't love knitting flat. Mm. I had four balls of yarn that I was managing <sighs> because right. I was you holding had an extra Newton one. in with. And you know, I was thinking about you because I was thinking, like, I don't even have it that bad because it's new to them. So I wouldn't, oh, it's not like I was, when all it. the balls of yarns were like yes. wrapping around each other, I was just like, ka -chink. Like even the mohair, oh, I so just ripped the mohair. Oh, you did. And I, <gasps> which course. was so much easier. I, I mean, I think there's a way to work with it. Like there's some sort of, like if I was one of those knitters who like, you know, un, like when you go from row to row, you, you like untangle, you put one to, to the left that. and one to the right and there's a way of doing it. But it's I was just still, like, nit, 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 nit. and if you want to bring it anywhere, especially if you're like last minute, yeah. you have to bring it places. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> because you're frantically trying to get it done. Um, I mean, I think in the end, I doubted the fit literally the whole way through. I was like, this is not going to work. Aww. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I, 
got up here before you add the ribbing it looks like a dog's breakfast up here <laughs> it just does not look good at all and I was like oh my god um so I added the ribbing and then once I added the rid ribbing I tried it on and I was like oh I have to go back and do the ribbing on the bottom then I have to pick up her sleeves then I have to go all the way down um and and the whole time it's looking like this bramble and I was steam blocking along the way, mm. um, but even the steam block doesn't fully open up the fabric. Yeah. So now that it's wet block and now that I've like done everything and like, oh, I learned a new skill, Andrew Mowry. I like as if I'm talking to her. She's um, watching this. <laughs> I, I, tell I finally hill. did a tubular bind off and I also um because the corrugated ribbing I did two by two um she has this tutorial that shows you how to transfer a two by two to a one uh no. a two how to convert a two by two ribbing like you you do this one step to set up your two by two ribbing so that it can be tubular right because tubular the yes. sewn bind off is like a one by one maybe the, yes. the so I learned how to do that. I understand the like, oh my gosh, about tubular ribbing, mm -hmm. tubular bind off and how gorgeous it is. So I learned a lot of things. Um, but I feel like I put so much effort into it and I wish that I had g more contrast between my... It's like what I'm thinking. I feel right? too. Yeah, like, I wish there was more of a... Like yours looks like a three color and I feel like mine looks like a two color. I don't think mine even... Does my it look totally like looks color? like a three color. There's the pink, there's the like, oh, uh, I guess. There's a darker wearing, and then there's the teal. Yes. But yours actually, looks, I think, yeah, okay. Like, I feel like no, mine like from a... far away looks like no. two colors. No, because it's so clearly the blue, and then you have the like the gold, oh, yeah, <laughs> and then the pink. Maybe it just like doesn't come out on camera, and I think maybe it is oh, one yeah, of those things that doesn't out sort of it come looks out. It a lot more um, in real person, in but real person. in all it's fairness, real. when I when I cast it on, I was super excited about it. I wanted to capture the colors of like a beach, like I was thinking yeah, like mermaid skills, and so us. like I do think that I achieved that. Yes, but because of how long it took me, yeah, I was like, I wish that I had gone higher contrast. That said, I'm sure with time, I will love this. Oh, I think you will in it. I, I mean, I think, I, st I, think I love it. I just don't love it when I stand next to another tessellated. Because I feel like I haven't actually like done the pattern justice because of the low contrast choices. And I've made low contrast choices before mm -hmm. in a pattern I where I think it. it's okay. Where I'm like, oh, the pattern still looks like the pattern. It, but it looks like a low contrast this looks version, like the does pattern. it? Yes. Because to me, if I feel like it, what it reminds me of actually is like woven fabric, which I kind of like. It's like a woven gingham, which I don't, which I love. But I, I actually like wonder if I, when I'm walking around Rhinebeck, if people will recognize it as the tessellated because it's so we different. We have another question we get to answer. <laughs> we'll answer this in the next one. Um, does it look like a Rhinebeck? Uh, anyone I at Rhinebeck, can you please come and say, <laughs> <laughs> make it worth it I mean I think it I, I'm what I what I know is that like you know before I we've talked about the fact that like since we've become knitting besties my object is not a finished object until like I get to see it through your eyes yes. and so I, I the whole reason why we knit oh. it or what why I decided to knit it is one because it was freaking gorgeous but also because I was like I I I want it's our first ride back and so I yeah. feel like it's appropriate for us to have that late experience so it is I agree and um, we did it we did it I mean we all always knew you would <laughs> but I didn't know if I would oh, I it know. was seriously like I was like okay Jackie you have to do five like there are other things oh. that I have knit that I'm gonna show that I like <laughs> process wise was like so loved well. so much yeah and I did this like full-on bargaining with myself where I was like hey if you do five five blocks of the fluff then you can go and knit two rows of the other thing and so I felt like it was like my knitting I situation is never that. like it's never organized I don't actually have a nice nook with everything like arranged uh -huh. it's just like yarn explosion but it was like it was like yarn explosion to three projects that I was working oh on gosh. and I would like do some of this one so that I could get to two rows of the other one and then my hands would need a rest so I needed to go to like another one especially when I was in the small circumference but Product wise, it's I'm pretty beautiful. happy. It's beautiful. Now I have to point, I have to do the thing where I point out the thing that actually irks me about it so much. Okay. Which is my gauge significantly changed between um, when I was in the round and up here. 
So I feel like there's a line right here. Oh. I just thought it was part of this hand spun. And maybe it is the hand spun. Because maybe it's not like the line there, you know? Like, I yeah, so. maybe it is just, but I'm like, oh, I don't does see Does it, it look like two pieces? I'm like, we're just going to call it, it a Gansey. It does not look like you know, two like pieces. Like a Gansey, like, has a texture here, and then it's, I'm like, it's just a Gansey tessellated. But this construction, I would do a million times over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, those things way back, probably youngins won't, probably never had these, but there were these 3D pictures that you had to stare at and like let your eyes go like a little, and like yeah. it just looked like a bunch of dots and then you see this 3D thing pop out. Yeah. I suddenly see what you're saying, <laughs> but I didn't see it at all. No, no. And now everybody no, who watches our podcast can't not unsee see it. it. So you're why did you do that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I needed you to share in my experience because you were looking at me like, are you freaking nuts? It's gorgeous. And I'm like, I would, no, <laughs> to be fair, I have to say, I don't see it. I really don't see it as much here, but I can, ouch. <laughs> I can see it here on the, yeah. on screen. Wow. Again, it's like from far away, nobody will notice. No. But I will. No. And I, will I just get spent 40 it. minutes looking at your thing and yeah. I didn't see it at so, all. So 40 beautiful. minutes on the tessellated. Um, um, two. We, we, did we did two. two. We did two. You're welcome. <laughs> Look at it. We're like a full service podcast. What? You know, like most people are only going to choose one of these two patterns. <laughs> you get to see both. Yeah. Um, what else is there in terms of the, the, uh, so I knit it, I knit a size one. Oh, I don't gosh. know what my gauge is, but the, um, I ended up with a 38 inch bust. So like, I don't know two inches of positive ease but what I love what I love and I'm like now looking for patterns on Ravelry that have this construction is you get the drop shoulder without all the extra fabric yes. so and like that's the fit is she, amazing that's right because so by adding stitches she didn't have to make it larger in order to get down to here she's so smart she's, she's so, so smart. smart and like this line oh my god I love this line. Yes, I don't know why. I'm just like obsessed with it. So you know what? Here's another difference. In in this version, we do it upside oh. down. So you don't have it like you're supposed to do it. So it's like not standing up. Oh, you don't have a. Not in this version. Seam. But in this expo version. Expose seam is like my favorite thing. It's it, it's beautiful. But and, and what's funny is I wouldn't want it here. That would look odd for just yeah. like suddenly here. But here, because there's such a like contrast there's so much more of it I also feel like it just follows the shoulder so in the perfect way it so really I does. like there's like you knit flat and then you do shoulder shaping so I followed her shoulder shaping I just made this a little bit longer and the way that it ends up falling is it's just gorgeous glorious I have another question for yes. you but so because you did this you did a provisional uh -huh. you've got this little thing I'm assuming you add did you do the same like there did you purl to yes kind of mimic yeah this? yeah so, so um smart. i did uh between the body and the ribbing i did a pearl row you to kind of this to kind did of you have to go back and add it or did you think in advance i did it in some other pattern oh. there was a pearl row between the ribbing and the um the main body yep. and i really liked that little edge so, so I did, I did the pearl, there's a pearl row down here. You just can't see it as well. I thought that was because you're provisional. Oh, you just added the, I thought that was the provisional and then you added, you mimicked it in the rest. No. Oh, gotcha. No, I did oh, I provisional like with waist yarn like and then knit down. Cool. <sighs> okay. Cool, cool, cool. I'm complete. Please come say hi to us in your desolated, please. Yes. Please come see us on the hill. Well, we, all the rest of you will be on the hill. If you... If you're on the, remember last time I was like, I wouldn't, I'd kick myself off the hill if I You, we made it! I did, but I also would never kick anyone else off you. Everybody should come. <laughs> um, and you know what? Just for the sake of balance, if any of you are knitting the sweater, have knit the sweater, and like had an absolute grand old time, can you please drop your positive comments in the, in the thing? Because I was, I was driving over today. I was like, am I going to rant about the sweater? Yes. Like. And I was we like, yes, be honest. because this is our podcast and we're just going to like tell it like it is. We have to. And I, I bet you our next episode, after we've had the Rhinebeck yeah. experience, I'm going to be like, this is my favorite sweater of all time. Because that's how it goes. I'm going to love it so much. Yeah. Because it's going to have some. It is gorgeous too. You know, like as I look, you. I'm like, it is worth it. But you know, we're going to be honest about not every knit is fun. Like, yeah, not, not every, every knit is. Fun. is. 
the ones that we're going to talk about today that we luckily have yeah. ones where you're like, oh my God, like process is also as exciting as product. But yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's just about the process or the product. I also, I, I like, I, what I'm learning is that a fingering weight gauge is not my happy gauge. Like you're, I think you. It's not my happy gauge for um, process. Knitting. Yes. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. But the fabric is so beautiful. But the fabric is so beautiful. So this is the one thing that I do want to say. I do believe that this actually might sort of like rank in the top five things I've ever made because the it. fabric that this made mm -hmm. with like Newtonin and Newtonin and this like Gotland Merino silk flax like mohair. Yeah. It is. It's when would you ever incredible. do incredible? Like, like the fabric that it makes. Like I was thinking to myself, she also has the cowl pattern, right? The rad plaid cowl pattern is the same oh, stitch. Is it? Um, and I, I am, you know, I've had, I bound this off like three days ago. I was like, now that I'm three days away, I'm like, maybe I should cast on the rad plaid <laughs> because I don't learn because it feels so good. And I was thinking like how it's good it would feel up in here. And I have thought because I've got other, um, I might, I might take this out and make it tinier. Oh, I'm just thinking smaller. About it. Yeah, like pick up less stitches. I picked up less stitches pick already, but I feel like stitches. I would pick up less. Like, do you yep. see it kind of is puckering a bit? Yeah. But I, you know what? I'm gonna block it first. Yeah. Wet, wet block first. Um, hey, anyway, I'm gonna need to do this knitting math now. You are gonna pick up more stitches less or less stitches? stitches? Okay, even less stitches. Yeah. 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 To bring it in. Yeah. I think Although I what's interesting is like that. one of the ways that I bring in is like yes. Um, Picking up less stitches, but actually, if you make the ribbing like taller, it brings it in. It now, would. I think the proportion here is perfect, so I wouldn't do that. But mm -hmm. I just had a I moment where I was like, one. "How do you hack the pattern to like knit it in such a way that it looks the way that it looks in your head?" True. Yeah. I. You know what? I this like is landing it. right at my shoulders. Do you I think like that's it. what I should I do, guys? Like, perfect. it actually maybe is perfect. Maybe I should just. Whatever. I also think, you know, if I think about I think like vests, not that I haven't worn a vest since the 90s, maybe I should go try a vest. Um, but like when I think about a vest and a button down mm -hmm. versus like a tank top, like I like my tank tops, the sleeves to kind of be, be closer in. Yeah, like more in. A bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but in a vest, I feel like you want it to make, make that box. line like right along that shoulder. And once I have a shirt, yeah, it's also going it to change. Right? I will want some space underneath. And like same thing, it's like I almost would try it on with the collared shirt before I decide, like before yeah. you decide on the neckline. I totally will. Um, so. I think I was saying something and then got completely oh, distracted. Yeah. No. Oh, you were myself. thinking about redoing, you were oh, thinking about the tessellated. Because I've got other hand spun that has longer color changes. Color changes. And I'm like, it really is such a glorious thing, like pattern to, to. It's so beautiful. Demonstrate gorgeous yeah. color changing yarn. It's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. And I just think the like geometry of it is very pleasing to me. Yeah. It's really pleasing. It's like, it's like, I don't know. It it is kind of like those like three D picture puzzles where, yeah. where yeah. there's something about it um, that's really pleasing. And I also think three having like three to four color color work is is makes for really fun color play. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of us, um, mm -hmm. or I'll speak for myself, like usually color work, I'm looking at two colors. Yeah. Maybe three colors. Yes. And so this one is like, it is three different yarns, but be if you have a color changing one, then there's like additional even colors, more. even more. Yeah. So I, I feel like my excitement about the Tessellated when it got released was just the color play options, like just the idea of being able to like bring in so many different colors. And there mm -hmm. is a part of me that wants a do over in terms of having um, hand spun, like having greater contrast and then also having that experience of moving through um different colors in your yes. background contrast color i agree um, like i was almost thinking if i were to to spin it again like maybe i would spin two braids like two different color braids that had like similar yeah. colors so that there is kind of like a shift yes. as opposed to going with one braid yes 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 jackie <laughs> yes jackie stay tuned in 14 months we will have our second tessellated right I was Cowell. considering, because I remember I was saying with Melissa, like, um, 
uh, with the pink, I had to decide between the pink. I, so the other one was something like similar this. to this. It had that kind of like feel, oh, so it was with the blue. It's also so Isn't it good. gorgeous? Like I actually am like, oh, I, I want that one too. So then I was thinking I might, I started with this and I wasn't sure. And I was like, what if I did like a little bit here and then did a like the, this color and then here did. Oh, like a stripe. Yeah. Like or more like a dip. Like a dip dye? Dip, but on top too kind of thing. Like doing the top part being the pinks. Yeah. And then the, uh, you know, color blockers. Yeah. Maybe. Like there's options that you can do. See, oh God, no. should I have done so that good. one? I was so Why don't you just knit another vest? <laughs> Why Cast it on tonight. Not. Cast it on tonight. <gasps> nope, because I've already got something else that I'm yeah. excited to. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about your whip or should I keep going through all my finished objects? Go ahead. Go through it. Okay. I can also um, talk about those other ones, my other finished ones. That I was oh yeah. Gonna... Okay, you do yours. So <laughs> the problems in Jackie's life. <laughs> Which finished object do I choose? Okay. I have so many. Oh, you brat! <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. You know how Frisco was chasing pizza? He loves pizza, but chasing him, biting him? I kind of get it. It's <laughs> kind of what I want to do right now. I kind of just want to chase you around the house and bite you. I can't tell you. I warned you. I told you it was going to happen. I know you did, but I was <laughs> Look what he's doing. Oh, <laughs> <that's> so perfect. <laughs> oh, it's mine. Just give it to me. Oh, God. Look so at you're it. a Oh, my God. Jackie. Jackie. Uh, okay, I don't know if I've... I mean, and there's been so many... I don't think I've ever seen a sweater look better on you. Thank you. Like, and that says a lot. We we know that it's perfection. I'm obsessed with it. It's perfection. I, okay. So if you're in a knitting slump and you're thinking about sweater weather and you would like to knit something in an Aran weight yarn or even a DK, this is the sweater you need this is to the knit. Sweater. It's so enjoyable. It's too. the most enjoyable. Like the reason that it's done. So so this is. Mm -hmm. I'm, okay. Okay. <laughs> just, I'm gonna do five blocks of this. And then I get to work on my yurt. Like this was this was me. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So this is the Yura sweater. We've talked about it, but it's a pattern by Egg Units. Um, this the reason it's so beautiful is because Carmen flew all the way to the land that has the just yarn. for that. Just for this. I so. flew there just for. <laughs> Let me, I'm not going to be able to say it, but let me say it before oh, yes. I forget all these things. Okay. Oh, no, I can't say it. Okay, so. Hilda th this, are gonna get We're going to put it in, the, we're gonna put it in <laughs> the description box. Hellholtz Old Spindery Handwerks Garn, which is, like, this is the first time I ever knit a pattern in the sample. The original. Yes. Um, wool. And I could not be happier with it. I could not be happier with yeah. it. So. So also, so there's several reasons why this is the best pattern ever. One is because hello is gorgeous. Two is because it's at a large gauge. Three is because the construction is super engaging because mm -hmm. you start you start on this side mm -hmm. and you knit the sleeve, then you cast on, then you knit the body, and then you finish with the sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, what else? The cables mm -hmm. are super enjoyable. Yep. And intuitive. And intuitive. So you're not looking at your... You don't have to look at the chart constantly. Pattern. No, no. Um, not really after... Like well, the sleeve just like... So you start with ribbing and then I would say after about two repeats, mm -hmm. I like had the pattern nearby, but I was not really looking at it. And yeah. so you're just doing like in the round, knitting up. And by the time you get up here, you just kind of know all of the sequences. Yeah. Um, and then... The body does require a little bit more concentration, I will say, in terms of... Um, yeah, I guess there was a little bit of... Like, you have to... I learned a bunch of new things in terms of, like, casting things on, and, and then, like, it, it takes a little bit of concentration between tra um, transitioning from the sleeve to the body. But once you get yes. to about here, you have this whole section where it's just... You're just knitting basically, like, back and forth. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. Um, so you're knitting flat and then you seam it up later. So you're like knitting back and you forth. Seamed. I seamed. You I even, even enjoyed seam seaming. It. Yeah. I know. It was crazy. I told you. It's fun. It's like zips. It was very satisfying. And the other thing that I'll say about it, about do it. So there is a, you do a master stitch seam. It is the, the like, because the front and back is the same. Mm -hmm. You just sort of seam one stitch to one stitch. Yes. Whereas other stuff that I'd seen before, the back and the front were not exactly the same length. Oh. Or like it or maybe my gauge changed. So oh. I couldn't just go from like one stitch to another no, stitch. You, you had to like do, do some sort of like ratio thing oh, to make it work. Any, anyhow, also it's it's spun yarn and that makes it a lot easier to to seam also. Um I don't I mean what is there? I don't know what to say about this. I can't. I love it. It's perfect. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Um one of you left a comment on our last episode asking about the difficulty of this pattern. So, Carmen, you're, how far are you with yours? I've done the, oh, do I have it here? Oh. Yeah. I've done the back. I've done the back and then started the front. And started the front. So. And look, mine's going to be bigger than yours. I have a bigger yeah. gauge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, how do you feel about the difficulty of this pattern? I do not, I do not feel it's difficult. Like I, okay, my main suggestion to anyone doing cables is to learn how to do cables without a cable needle. You can learn how to do that, which is very easy. Yeah. And you can't become comfortable with it. Cables become just so enjoyable. You don't, you're not bringing things around and losing your cable needle and having all this stuff and having it hang one way or other. You're literally just flipping your switches, your sp switches, <laughs> your flip. You're switching your stitches is I think what I was trying to do. You're just flipping them around on your needle. You pull it yeah. off, pull them, put it back on. And I have, as I've said before, a little like trick in my brain that I remember what, how, how to remember what, how to cross the left to make it go left right. or right. Yeah. You get that done. So then, then everything is actually, in my opinion, very straightforward. There were, there was the part about switching to the back that originally in the, in the pattern, the first version was very unclear. But it was very clear. Once they updated it, I was like, it's, "Yeah." I just feel like I've just been going this. This I think I knit all of this in. I don't even think it was more than like seven days. Like it's super fast. It is really fast. Yeah. It is really fast if you're not working on the tessellated. Because what I mm -hmm. I knit this mostly on the plane, mm -hmm. and I was shocked how at how how far it was moving. Now mm -hmm. I. They were two 26 and 30 hour things. Mm. And I just like should have slept, but I was just like, nee, 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 nee. because oh, it was so fun. Engaging. It was so engaging. It's fun. It's so fun. It's one, you know, it's one strand as well of a very nice, this yarn. I love this yarn. Is so I don't like soft. spun yarn. You guys know this. I don't like spun yarn. I like I this yarn. I love it. And it's softer than we, than you imagine it would be. Because yeah. it's not a, it's not merino. It, it's half merino, half fall. Is it half? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh well, it's not. It does not feel like a it regular feels merino. Feels rustic. But it's a rustic wool, but it feels soft and it's. And also, like you know, spun wool gives you this definition of the cable. Like it just is so perfect. But I don't know if you can appreciate. Like it's still drapey, it's right? Because so one of the things that I don't love about a cabled sweater yes. is that it feels like you know we talked about. It, it's like it feels like you're in a life jacket because it's yes. like it's, it's all like stiff mm -hmm. and I like this yarn is so it really lovely the definition is beautiful the drape is beautiful I just realized <sighs> we're saying this to probably people many yeah many of our it. watchers are probably in our position where we get can't there. get this I'm gonna get there oh um so I love this so much that a second one is gonna happen okay Hi. and DK and a fluff. I want to do a Sonder yarn oh. Sunday morning DK with mm -hmm. a strand of mohair. Because, so I knit the size one. I did make modifications, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I knit the size one. I knit it on a US 8 or a 5.0, which is a, like two needle sizes down from what's recommended in the pattern. Yes. Now I am a loose knitter, so I tend to always go two needle sizes down yeah. for the pattern. Um, and I used 
610 grams or <laughs> glad i got you <laughs> nine skeins <games. laughs> i was really hopeful i was so i only used 10 grams of the seventh skein but now i have like more yarn to yeah. play with um, another thing 1336 yards 1336 yards um and like i 610 grams is heavy for me it's like, more than a pound. You know, like I, I knit with Newton. My mm. average sweater, you know, like this was 250. two, two forty something. Yeah. Um, I'll put all the yard amounts um in the description box. Um, but I do, although it's drapey, and I love it. I was like, I would like to wear this to Rhinebeck, but I might have to wear cut off shorts and flip flops. <laughs> Roll it up <laughs> to, to survive. <laughs> to survive. <laughs> like 610 grams of wool so in my head I was like what if I did a DK and a strand of mohair and so That's still um, hot, it'll probably though. be warm but I think yeah. it will I'm really excited about sort of experiencing that yeah um, this was not my brilliant idea in fact um Melissa Kulo um the Sonder yarn queen um she Goddess. actually I didn't realize that she swatched for this pattern using Sunday morning DK and, and it, a strand of mohair oh, so and she smart. and it is gorgeous yeah, of and so i'm like okay well if melissa says like if melissa says she can do it and she's swatched for it like i'm sure that it can be done it's amazing so um what were they talking about the uh the yarn the ease of the pattern oh. i have to say that the pattern oscillates between being totally easy to do and then i was like confused Later than maybe where I'm at? No. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't say confused. I would say that like, I've never done a side to side construction. So maybe that's part of it. But I was like, I'm reading the instructions and I'm like, I think this is what they want me to do. Mm. And I would do it. And as I was doing it, I had like no reference point to know whether it was correct or not. You know how like if you, you not if, guide you step by no, step. No, I would say that it like you know there's there's conversations about like an uh, American style knitting pattern. Like Andrew Mowry has yeah, a like hand held. Here you go. There's a video this for everything. <laughs> you know exactly what's happening. Yes. Like your hand is being held. This is not one of those patterns. Now okay. I never know you know um, the challenges of translation. So we obviously knit it from the English pattern. I yeah. will say that I bought this in its first version and the first version I would I love the pattern but was like I don't know if I can re recommend this pattern to somebody because I had I was very lost even the charts like there was no charts they, like I mean there were charts but they, they were not the like regular, the cable charts were yeah, not reg the regular regulation like yeah. everything was different yeah um but I have to give credit um to Agio Knits because their second version like I don't know it's like three times as long yeah. There's so much support in it. There's videos in it and they sort of walk you through the process. But I would say because it's kind of like an unconventional construction, there are places where you're not like where I wasn't really sure what it is that they wanted. Um, Agreed. Wanted me to do, but I just went along with it and it worked out perfectly. That's fine. what I would mean. Like, so hundred percent, it's not straightforward. Yeah. But in terms of difficulty, it's not actually difficult. Yeah. You just have to follow along and be like, and you're right. Like to know what it's doing helps like because then you're like oh okay I'm going down like yeah. this this is supposed to be yeah and yeah. I think you know it was really helpful for me actually f to see your whip because there's you're like working in the round and then you add the body and then you're sort of knitting the front and the back and then mm. at some point you have to split again yes. to create the hole for the neckline which I was like the of course yes <laughs> and so there's this there's a process of sort of like binding off and casting on around the neckline that i would say was a little bit tricky to wrap my head around yes but again it's like it's like there's four rows where you're like ooh, is this am i doing yes. this right and then after you get past that sort of like tricky area then it's then you're just back to like happy cables happy cables because there is some shaping around here yeah. um for that the other thing that I will say which was kind of a funny like like turning my knitting brain like on its side literally, literally um was that the also this designer uses the convention of sort of saying okay um n knit this length or this sort of dimension right like mm -hmm. it's like like knit for I don't know yes. this many centimeters and then go to the next step yes so you have to navigate 
sort of those dimensions, which I've never sort of thought about, like what's the distance between my like, uh, like the end of my body and yes. the beginning of my neck. Like this is a straight, like I'm like, I don't know what the, what that's supposed mm. to be um, for my particular body size. Um, so there's a little bit of navigating of that. And then there's a also, you'll, you'll see, I hope that I've done it, that it's symmetrical. Like the, the yeah, cables are like, symmetrical Yes. from side to side. And so you kind of have to manage that, that symmetry yourself. Yes. Okay, fair. So it's like, but, but here's the thing that I would say, like if you didn't quite get this right, it's such a minor thing, Yeah. right? Yeah. And if like it wasn't 100% it symmetrical, right? Like. It, are you really gonna notice like in this whatever yeah right and it's easy to take out like it, it you're not putting hours and hours into something like yeah. it's it's going really fast yeah there is like a very i feel like there is a very magical moment though because i mean i was sort of trying it on as best as one can try on a sweater yeah. on a flight in economy well and, and when it's on like running like to this, the you can't get it on right like to an airplane bathroom <laughs> being like yeah that's awesome I love how you would do that. I would probably just use my phone. <laughs> no, I was in coach. Of course. Not like <laughs> oh, I see. But I, well, my bad. Isn't it nice to be his body size that you could even do this in a bathroom and a yeah. plane? I couldn't. Oh, no. No, no. I could do this. <laughs> it would be a lot longer for me. Anyhow, to try and figure out, is it time for me to split for the, to split for the neckline? So yeah, here are my modifications. Um, I did not, I did not follow the dimensions provided by the designer around when it was that I sort of started the neckline and how wide the neckline is. So if you were to look on, um, I'm sure it'll happen with yours. And if you were to look, um, on Ravelry or on Instagram at other versions of this, um, mine, tur mine turtleneck, my mock neck is tighter. Mm. It's, it's, that makes sense. it's tighter, it's beautiful. which I just sort of was a choice that I made because I knew it was going to be roomy. Yeah. I like and it. And this came out to the bus size on this is, um, 45 inches in the pattern. The smallest size should give you 48. And I just felt like 48 is going to be really big on you. On tiny. me. So I, um, sort of, again, you, you can modify it. So the designer says like knit this distance and then split and then knit this many um, centimeters and then join it again mm -hmm. and I just reduced all of those makes sense a little bit um picked up this and then picked up sort of an a, appropriate a proportionate number of stitches for the neckline um I put in in the pattern they um there's no short rows as you can imagine because it's being knit like this way so um she has this brilliant thing where she puts the short rows in the ribbing oh, so it's a split hem really neat. um i also added short rows in the neckline so when i was knitting this when you're doing the ribbing, mock neck. i <clears throat> when i did the mock neck um i picked up i did a bunch of short rows and then i knit straight so i have cool. sort of double That's short smart. rows and i think that that i like um, it you know just helps with the fit yeah Simple modification. It's I'm sorry that I finished it. <laughs> and I love it. And would you like to try it on? No. I won't <laughs> until I try mine on because yeah. if I like yours better than the one I make, I'll be very mad. <laughs> yeah, so I mean we have a big gauge mm, difference, right? It's really big. It's we a, have a big a, body difference though too. <laughs> yeah, so and, and it might be similar. Again, like I'm so the, it's it's so helpful when somebody else paves the way for a pattern because you knit this first. Right. And I was like, see how big I, that like is. I think I would be I think I would be swamped by it. Yeah. Just in terms of like I hope it's not gonna be too it's big. not going to but be. But I don't, I don't as think I it say, is. it's not very um it's just so fast that I if I have to pull it out, I just pull it out. I mean it's it's it so right enjoyable. Sleeve. Yeah, that's your right sleeve. Like I think right? so, my body oh yeah, this is my weirdo thing. Hopefully that comes back. Um yeah, like, I feel like I, it'll be different for we me. went mine is a lot yeah smaller yeah um and that was intentional for me because i didn't want i mean i like positive ease but i wanted i love a tight sleeve mm -hmm. so <clears throat> um yeah the other thing that ended up happening as a bit of an accident which i'm like i think i'm gonna do this always for cables is that um so i used a us8 on my right hand and i didn't realize that i had a us7 on my left hand Okay. Yep. 
And yeah. it makes making, I was like, why are these, why am I, why is it so easy to do these cables? Right. Because it's easier to pull it off and switch yeah, it. Yeah. So if that you're like sense. working with, um, that makes sense. Cabling without a cable needle, it was so much easier to kind of like, what did you say? Switch the, switch the stitch? Flip the, <laughs> to do the cabling. The switch, switch, flip, I don't know what I flippy, said. switchy mm -hmm. thing. Um, that makes sense with a smaller needle on in. the other side. Now I'm yeah. a con I'm I'm a picker or I'm continental, mm -hmm. so I feel like what is in my left needle doesn't impact my gauge so much. It doesn't for anyone, right? You because I always. um, it was a mistake that I did that on the sleeve, mm -hmm. and then when I switched to a cable needle, um, I had an eight and an eight, mm -hmm. and I was like, why is this so much like, harder? Why is this feel less easeful because like generally speaking I don't find small circumference knitting easeful right so this right? should be so better I was like this should be better like why is it better and I went back and I looked and I realized that I'd done that and I was like I think I'm gonna do that, that for cables sense. forever that makes a lot of sense um because it just makes the passing over easier yeah because when you pass you basically what you're doing is you're you're taking your needle and like grabbing stitches behind and then you're pulling all the stuff off and leaving things and then you have to thread them back on right yeah. so so it just yeah the circumference difference so if you have like um interchangeables like try it let me know how it goes um but i love this one and so like this was just it it was it's the juxtaposition right it's the juxtaposition <laughs> yeah, of really this is versus this it's a very painful juxtaposition like when you want I wouldn't to knit suggest the other one. that you knit these two things at the same time not under time pressure right maybe actually it would be nice to knit it at the same time if you didn't have if you like, didn't have time pressure yeah yeah because in a way it would be like getting through this I mean, we're really selling it I know. <laughs> like it's like we're sorry you're Andrew getting Mowry, through not that you it. watch this but we're sorry it's not even a sorry like it's just a I reality mean, yeah, like reality. and the actual yeah. thing is people beautiful. like what they like yeah Yes, exactly. Right. Maybe some people do like this. Yeah. And, and I do think some people do. In fact, our friend Lily, um, who um, we're going to be at Rhinebeck with from Curatorial Knits, Knits like she, it's, it's so lovely to have a friend who's loving the process because Lily was loving the process and like, I would like siphon off her excitement mm. so that I could get through it. Um, and like see her progress and that makes sense. and that would motivate me. And I think, you know, that's part of like doing a knit along, like having a cow. Um, is being able yes. to like, you know, lean on each other's creative flow and excitement because I do think, you know, any project that takes a long time has ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. when I got to the bottom ribbing for this sweater, I did just want it to be done because I was so impatient oh, for just like wanting it. to wear it. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, the ribbing, it, it it is on a big, actually, US 8 for the body ribbing in US on a US 3. Um, so the ribbing, Three. yeah, I'm really lo loose knitter she for really, my ribbing you to can't look knit good. Socks. It has to. <laughs> there are no needles that are small it, enough. No, this is why I don't knit socks. Yeah, I can only knit not like tiny DK socks, socks exactly. because I think I tried to like get a fabric out of fingering sock yarn, and I was on double zeros. You and I was to like, more than that. This like, is not. It's too loose. I, can you imagine me on like double zeros and I tiny could, little and I don't like would... things and I was like I hate you <laughs> like I was just like this is not never I'm never gonna be like no like there's no universe in which I'm gonna like develop mojo around using essentially freaking syringes <laughs> myself with these tiny metal needles oh, needles true. like actually a needle just like ugh. fair i love i love knitting like blood is dripping out my hands. it's all over your socks you're like give knitting here you're like what's all the brown and also like why does it feel absolutely <laughs> terrible like i get up and it's just like there's no good energy flowing from these that's right. blessings i hate every moment just, of like, this. Every you're, you're welcome but it's in the pattern i don't know if you don't remember there's a significant size difference <gasps> there is there is like i i think i only the pattern yeah the pattern right, does this right, and right. i mean it's genius it just like create like i think it's it it's amazing. needed i mean ugh, just the Anyhow, we love this pattern. It's gorgeous. <laughs> we love this pattern. Maybe I will wear this to Rhinebeck. 
You're gonna wear it to the rhyme shorts. It. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be 50 to 60. I, or what, 50 what 60? What is that? Exactly, I don't know what that means, but people, like Lily was like, that's good. Oh, okay, so we can wear sweaters? I think so. so. Yeah. I wear the sweater. Obsessed. It is, it is amazing. Obsessed. It's such a perfect, like, I wanna sit in front of the, the fire, like with a like nice, like, like Christmas time, or a ski chalet maybe? It is very like um, an Irish ski. coffee and just like, like Look at me all pretty in my leg. But I think it works for fall and also oh. it works all the time. Like all the time. Maybe not dead of summer. Can you imagine in this color? Oh. I can. <laughs> yeah. Like Yeah. That's Yeah. I think when I get to my second one, I want to do a more saturated color, although this might be the perfect blue. So, um, one of the things that I will say for the people who didn't have a friend who flew all the way to I am amazing. Denmark. And then she went and finished it first. Denmark. Met a friend in Denmark and dragged said friend to a knitting shop to buy out the entire stock of the knitting from shop. Danish music. She was years. amazing. Um, I think <laughs> there are lots of different... Um, yarn subs so if you mm. go on Ravelry and you look at the um the the project page there are um different yarn subs um I almost before Carmen left um was looking at the fiber company I can't remember what oh, it is yeah. but the fiber company is pretty um available in North America and when I looked at the samples that were knit in that um the sort of the drapiness is the same um mm. There are, there's lots of options and what I find what I found super helpful because actually they don't um if you go on the website or if you go on Ravelry um the company doesn't actually share the makeup of this so I don't actually I feel like I read somewhere using Google Translate that it was a combination of Merino and Falkland mm, yeah because I can um, tell but you can rely on grist right so finding a yarn that is rustic that has the same yardage for weight i think will lead to um having success in terms of getting the sort of like drapey look yes like drapey but with stitch definition look so i think that there are lots of options um and i'm really excited to see if i can get more drape um by doing like a dk plus mohair um because i just think it will be stunning Stunning is right. So are you, is this, is this up next? Now that your tessellated been, is done. It would have been, it would have been if Melissa it's been didn't exist with her gorgeous <laughs> patterns. You know what's so funny when I think about um, Melissa? Melissa's been designing for so long. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I haven't, it's not like I wasn't aware of her patterns, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I'm going through like her aesthetic. I'm so attracted to like right now. Oh yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I there's like, there are it. things that are beautiful um, and there's different forms of beauty, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, f I find that like we have, like I have phases of like a particular aesthetic or a particular style or a particular thing that um, I'm just like really into, yeah. right? I guess like yeah. there's like there's trends, but then I'm like I'm talking about internal trends, right? Like yeah. your internal sort of like attraction. I'm really attracted to like this right now, and I feel like yeah. I'm have I'm like really attracted to um, Melissa's aesthetic and and what she does right now. Me too. Um, Me because too. I, you will see that I'm I've gone, we have gone nuts on Sondra yarn, um, and are oh. both just knitting Melissa Glow patterns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If Melissa could just like be in my house every day and just like tell me what to wear and how to look, I would just be the happiest camper. And what's so funny is Melissa's very like minimalist, like, like her, like, so she doesn't have very like strong, like the colors I usually do, right? Like these really like mm -hmm. bright stuff. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of that, right? There's one sweater called the bright sweater, I think, mm -hmm. like I think she has. And then every, like, they're very, very like, they're just so classic and like, there's so much black. <laughs> there's a lot of black. It's a lot of black. And like neutrals, but they, they oh. just look so classy. I just want to be Melissa. I do also want to yeah. be Melissa. And, and there's a, there's a proportion sense with Melissa. Yes. That's the thing that I feel like it's like, 
simple yes with like just enough of a twist and proportions and she knows herself very well i feel yeah. like when she so she designs for yeah. i think i'm assuming herself and and she picks patterns like when she she just takes pictures like you know with her phone she just like stand in front of her mirror and like just like snap an easy pick right and, and you're so like chic. like you're like oh my god like, how do i how she's not do out I there do? with a photographer no. right like like and a, and a stylist she's in her home in front of her mirror and i'm just like use a tripod <laughs> like i have you know like on a first click gorgeousness might as well be vogue amazing, amazing. which i think is you know knowing you know knowing your style like having a clear sense of style yes. um what i appreciate about melissa is like she's so consistent it's like yeah. everything has a particular point of view yes. um and i think her being at home in it yeah she right? just exudes it just feels like it yeah it looks so beautiful on her and so it's like i'm excited trying things to see if it can look like that on me or for um, you to have a little taste of whatever that vibe that whatever that, that energy like is. energy or mm. like um what, what am I trying to say? Like, like strand of beauty, right? Yes. I sort of think of like yes. beauty as like a rainbow and it's like, Aww. you know, like what, like part of the rainbow, Yes, like beauty what rainbow frequency or, yeah, what frequency or, or wavelength you're in, yeah. like what strand it is. And I feel like there's a, um, I think there's something about like fall and winter particularly that yes. makes me want to like hunker down into something that's like simple and cozy and elegant. Yes. And, and yeah, yeah, I will say too, like part, part of my like, um, reason I haven't been able to knit. So uh, like if for those who are new here, I golf as well. And so that's gotten in the way of, of my knitting over the summer and hasn't finished fully yet, but I'm also like getting back into my office, like, you know, like, cause mm -hmm. I was working remotely, um, for a long time and now I'm back in. So like, like that's taking a lot more time. Like mm -hmm. you have to like get ready in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. Pants. <laughs> you know, hair. Pants. Like, drive somewhere like and, and I don't want to get there right on at the moment so yeah, like, yeah. anyway but what I'm just thinking is like she has a lot of things that would be appropriate for work like mm -hmm. they're beautiful sweaters mm -hmm. and like but very class as I say classic, classic and appropriate work appropriate yeah I think this one's work appropriate. totally work appropriate yeah it's totally work appropriate yeah, I like it. um so that being said so what's what am I what am I doing? now that now that you're done with the tessellated what are you just dying to nail? I have two things. So I actually have two sweater quantities of Sondra yarn, just copying Melissa in exactly what she's done. <laughs> so you don't even have to watch the next few podcasts we do on my end, because you could be like, yeah, I know, I saw it. Like I went to Instagram and there we go. That's what but I want. But I want to see it on you. I do want to see it. And then I want to see it on me. Right. <laughs> so I am knitting the turtle dove. Oh. Uh, and guess what color I'm doing? Exactly that one. That one. Because I'm not, I'm not, like, you don't mess with perfection. No. It's perfect. Or sometimes it speaks to you exactly as it is. Like, and come I'm gonna on. Sit and read. I'm going to sit and read and look like this. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. This See, dream life. all comfortable with my nice, beautiful turtle dove party. So. Melissa had put out the turtle, I think it's one of her most popular patterns, the turtle dove. Uh, the original was a turtle neck, so it's a turtle dove. Yeah, um, there's two versions. It. Yeah. With two and, different uh, gauges, which are free patterns that you can access through a Spastry Co. That's right. That's right. And they were, uh, that's always been one I've been meaning to knit, but just never really got around to it. Mm -hmm. And then this came out. And so this is her first pattern in Lina magazine. So first one, that's really exciting. So Good exciting. job, Melissa. And that issue is delightful. Yes. This is also happening probably next, but anyway. anyway, so, I mean, I don't, there's not a lot to, okay, because of this, I was waiting for, oh, I was waiting for my, oh, I know what happened. Okay. I was ordering my sweet pea mm -hmm. at the same time. This had just come out. Like Melissa had just like Lina had just come out. So Melissa was, re you know, um, releasing things. And I had, um, I, I was like, I need to do it in this exactly this color. And I looked and there was exactly the wool on the, on the website. Yeah. So I ordered that I ordered the sweet pea and I ordered a whole other sweater, which I'll tell about another time. But I feel like I had to do two orders for some reason. I don't know what it was. Anyway, this one came first and I was still waiting on the sweet pea. So I couldn't start this. So I was like, I'm going to cast on. Oh, it's so sad. 
Let yeah. me cast on this but you know cardigan what? that I really want to make. It's <laughs> almost torturous because... Yeah. Uh, so it was the night before. So the next one came that day. So I was able to actually get the oh. start. So the ribbing, it starts with this ribbing at the top. Like this is one of those moments where I wish that you could reach through the screen and just feel this fabric. I can't even describe it. I, uh, I can't, um, I can't describe it. It's delectable. Un, it's, it is. So delectable. It is uh, a one strand of her Sunday morning four ply which is a 75% VFL 25% Massum fingering weight yarn beautiful held with not one but two strands <laughs> of her mohair that others have talked and Alex from the Serenity Knitting Society has talked about this like it is oh my god for one minute suddenly this oh I can't see it see this line right yeah. here it was coming, falling right in the middle, and it was like there was two screens. Oh yeah, like you that. See that? Isn't that weird? It's almost like your, you know, one of these Zoom like calls. Like photoshopped, if I did Yeah, this. or like two Zoom calls yeah. that we put together. We are no. actually together in real we life. <laughs> I feel like I need to cover this, because that, that was really weird. For the moment, I was just like, what just happened? I'm, I'm freaking out. Okay. <laughs> Carvin, come on, focus. Anyway, <laughs> so. <clears throat> this is the best mohair in my opinion. Well, or it ranks right up there with Shibui, which also has a beat well and Julie Aslan. So those are like, <laughs> those are it though, folks. Those are the best. <laughs> those are the best. Best in what super, way? Just the soft and no prickle. And this is where it's different. Obviously, each, so some people are like, there's no prickle at all in mohair. Other people really get prickle from Surrey. I don't get any prickle from Surrey. Mm -hmm. But mohair can be prickly for me. And this has, like, I'm now, it's like sitting right around my neck. Zero prickle in mohair. Zero. Zero. And halo. And the halo. So, one, it is the most delectable feeling mohair. And yeah. second, the halo that is that comes off this mohair is like, Ridiculous. ridiculous and it's a 70 76 24 76 24 76 so. mohair 24 silk yeah which i feel like is the the standard yeah um mohair but there's something about it's amazing. melissa's i don't know if it's her supplier or the dye process or whatever it is it's just like oh. it is it is amazing and i the other two i've named as great mohairs yeah. are both 60 40. So, you know, had more silk and so less of the scratchy. That's how I see yeah. it with this. Anyway. Oh. Anyway, so I knit in the one night. It was one night. Like it's on What's the sevens, gauge? I think. Yes, thank you. I have no idea. And I didn't. I didn't swatch. Ha ha. <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> it's just like, I'm just casting it on. So I cast on, I think, size two. Um, and I knit this. And then I... Oh, I couldn't find my, and then I had to go up to a size nine um, and I couldn't find my needles for that. And then just that next day, the, this stuff arrived and I was like, oh, I've got to just do it. So the gauge is 16 stitches by 21 rows on a US nine and stock, know? like stock net. Like, I mean, so then yesterday I finished this and I cat, I went right back to this. It wasn't even, I love the Euros. I like, I love this. I loved every moment of knitting it. And it wasn't even a question of which one I was picking up. Like, this one is happening. Anyway, that was last night. Just like... It's like having uh, cotton candy angel hair flowing through your fingers. <laughs> like, it's just, just like... It, it is. And so there's the feel and there's the color, too. Yeah. It's a really beautiful... Her colors are just like... It's just so curated, like, you know, these perfect colors. I don't think there's been anything I've knit from Sondra that I didn't, I wasn't, like, unbelievably happy. Yeah, with. in terms of the, um, the again, How it's it like this exactly. particular spectrum of color, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's green so is one of my colors. favorite colors. Yeah. There's so many versions of green. There's something about that green that, although, to be honest with you, I, like, I mean, this is, this is hopping on my needles next. Um, the Turtle Love Cardigan. And... 
I mean, when I love green, and when I saw the the um, photo, mm -hmm. I was like, "That's beautiful." But this photo does not capture how gorgeous that green is true. in real life. It is true. Like, I don't even think this. No, the, uh, it's, it's not, not bad. It's not bad, but it's not. So there, this one, you're it's picking up some of the like color, almost like seeing the silk. Maybe mm -hmm. that's not in real life. Like yeah, you, don't you don't see, see that, that kind of white, white piece. It's literally just a perfect. Boreal green. I think it's boreal. Yeah, it is boreal. Is it is are both of them boreal? Uh, no. no. Hang on, let me get oh, the little ways. things. Oh my god, no look! Look what I did. Oh yeah, you could just do it. But I even had the little things like Jackie Rose does. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say here. I, it might be. Oh, hang on, hang on. The um Sonder yarn. The the fingering is wildwood. Oh, wildwood. And then the mohair is boreal. Um, okay, so so I just want to take a moment to say that um, if you <laughs> if you have been sponge influenced by <laughs> our spooning over Sonder, um, <laughs> the mohair is, if you went on the website right now, you would see that mohair is currently out of stock. Um, however, it will be coming back in the coming months. Um, so there's just, uh, Such a just model. have to covet for a little while longer if you're interested and i would in say hold, I, I would wait i mean this is one of my things is i have i have i also want to cast this on and i have my um fingering mm -hmm. and i have mohair and stash that i actually think will be super gorgeous but there is a part of me that's like do i hold out for the mohair well you, i don't you know if i can twice. hold out <laughs> so you'll have a sonder version it's true there you go it's true um it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's a, it's just absolutely. I am. I'm. No, go ahead. No. I'm really like. There's a part of me that's kind of surprised that you're getting it because this pattern has like the deepest of all mm -hmm. raglans. Mm -hmm. When I first saw it, I was like, no. I was like, I don't. Not no, but I was like, not for me. Right. Like. And it's then super it just for deep raglan. It just kept calling to me. Yeah. I don't know what it like. Yeah. And, and then it was like, and it must be this green. Like I would, they, so there's a pink version as well that she has and it wasn't the pink. Oh, maybe it's not in this one. Maybe they didn't show it in this one. Um, there is a, but there, there is, a, is a pot, like a, like kind of a bright pink, bubble gummy which pink. is also super gorgeous, yeah. which in, in other life forms of me, like I probably would have done pink, but no, no, this one has to be in this exact color. Who and thinks I'm this wear is it. my sweater? <laughs> um, not me. <laughs> <laughs> of course it looks gorgeous so on you. Um, oh my God. I know, I know. I I think I could have this done by next week for Rhinebeck. It's just flying. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's okay. But if you have to if you knit yours from Rhinebeck, then I have to go and cast one up today so that I have one. No, we don't. I don't have any of your other sweaters for red. What are you bringing? Bring, I don't even know what I I'm bringing. I don't even know what I'm bringing. I have some options. It really depends. I on think this will be done. I'm pretty sure. You think you can finish? So, it are you saying I should finish my Euro so we wear that together? You can finish. I'm not, no, I, I want I you. Can't. No, I want you to knit whatever it is that your heart wants to knit because we've been deadline knitting, and I like. So it's so interesting to me because you you are a prolific test knitter. I know. I haven't tested in a while. You haven't tested in a while. But like I feel like the whole deadline phenomenon is something that like je I'm used like to. you're used to like you're I don't know yes. it's like it's like y y this way of knitting is a land that you occupy whereas I'm like 14 whips only working on the thing that I really want to work on and I think that's what made the tessellated painful for me right. was that I was knitting it at a time that like I didn't feel like working on it because there was a yes. deadline so like I don't want to make either of these a right. deadline knit for you. And I don't like that part of test knitting. No? I off, no. I mean, I like it that I get it done, but I yeah. am like, no, I don't. Yeah. I, and I laugh at myself because I will be like, I'll have, I'll be out with friends and I'm like, I'm sorry, I've got like, I gotta be <laughs> knitting. Gotta go. No, I'm gonna be knitting while we're here, which oh. I probably would anyway, but even at like, sometimes like at dinner and I'm like, I just have a knitting deadline. <laughs> and they're like, and I'm like, I know, knitting's supposed to be a relaxing thing. Only I can turn it into something where there's this like demand because I'm just so enthusiastic and have too many things, but. Yeah, I I just, I find the, I found the whole experience really interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I would have, as much as I, you know, 
found the deadline, just the pressure of the deadline sort of like challenging. I'm not sure that I would have finished it in less than 24 months if I just waited until I felt like exactly. it. Exactly. That's the thing. A test knit's probably not a bad idea for something that you know would be more of a, pro uh, of a product knit because if you don't like it, it makes you finish it. Like this needed, yeah. uh, if this didn't have this time. Do you I, think, I think well, mine would have gotten distracted for yeah. sure. And then I would have finished this one. Yeah. I mean, my Straya is sitting there. Like my Straya is a similar, it's similar to this. It's got like that kind of like, it's not a hard stitch and it's enjoyable sometimes. Like the stitch is enjoyable. Yeah, I, I actually like, the, it wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't uncomfortable. Like, you know what it is? The thing with the tessellated is just it seems to move so oh, slowly. Slow. The the Painful. the mosaic and, like, you know, the slipping and the knitting, it's actually, like, really fun. It's just, yeah. like, I was, like, maybe this is a time for me to use a progress keeper. So I, like, put a progress keeper <laughs> where I started and then I would knit and it felt like, you know, I had like, done a big <laughs> session yeah, and I looked like... down and I was, like, okay, I'm removing the progress keeper. I cannot use the progress keeper because it was so like demoralizing. moved on my blue, like on my hand spun yeah. rows. And then I would do the, the like uh, fluff rows yeah. and nothing would change. <laughs> and part of that, I do think part of that is because it's, it's so stretch, scrunchy. Right, you're right. So you're like, oh my gosh, I'm knitting forever. And then if you're like me, you try and try it on. You're like, why is it like a crop top? Like, why oh my God, I've been at this for like hours and it like doesn't fit right. And it's all like mm -hmm. crumply. Um, mm -hmm. because actually I love mosaic knitting and the actual pattern stitch is amazing. I just yeah. need it to be at a larger gauge, a larger gauge. And uh, as much as I do it as a, at a larger gauge. Yes, of course. Why couldn't you do, can do anything? <laughs> of course. But construction. <laughs> you could do it. Of course. You would just change totally your, just doing do your math. math. Yes. That would be actually nice too. You'd have a bigger, yeah, that would be nice. Big block tesselated. But Sorry, the other piece of it is the extra strand like that extra strand is annoying like mm -hmm. the three strands and one being a fluff like surrey's better than a mohair mohair would have been even more right, nightmarish because it up. gets caught like just even just even touching another one would get it like <laughs> and you have to like rip them apart you're like what's going on just let me finish and you were like romney is also quite grabby yeah uh, that's true like you were using a and lot then of my black yard like this is grabby. also not a yeah anyway. yeah we're going back on this one. It's a it's a really lovely pattern. It's not pain, it's not Yeah, no, it's awful. Our subjective okay. experience of it was that it wasn't um fun. it wasn't fun the whole way through. It was like fun and then it was it fun for slog. the first yeah, like a couple inches. I also really enjoyed the corrugated ribbing that made ribbing the ribbing like really fun for me. I didn't love the tubular cast off, but I can see why it's so gorgeous. It just takes fun. um but yeah, yes. right. I mean, I would be so chuffed if you actually finished it for my Rex. I might. Right. I, I actually, might. I feel like I could. Now in, I was saying to Jackie, like, I think there's some, like, I didn't look to see the errata. I have to, which usually in Lina, I will also say, because we just tell it like it is. Lina Magazine has the most beautiful patterns and the photography and the presentation. I love it. I order them in advance like I just I have a subscription and I'm like give them all to me like I don't even care what it's going to be I'm glad to just get it but the actual like there's like I don't know if they're, they're typos or different things like so there's often mistakes so before like when I did my I still have this one still that's not finishing because I'm on the like I'm the stockinette and this, and joy this size two stockinette but I remember looking at the errata for this to check you should check it all the time I have not checked the eternal dove one but there are quite a number of things that are like missed there's some missed things like commas and things well no like a place marker or okay. like a, like um and where things are anyway just saying yeah I mean I but think one of the things out. that I it's funny because I was thinking like just comparing um the turtle down cardigan pattern, which is, which is what I was looking at sort of after I finished my Eurus. Um, and the Eurus pattern is like a bedillion number of pages. And the turtle down cardigan <laughs> is like two, three. Yeah. And like one page is just the stats, like the pattern itself. I think it's like two pages. And that's one of the things that um, Lina being a publication, mm -hmm. there's like a limit in terms of um, what you can do. And I have always yeah. been amazed by how how both pattern designers and you know the pro the process of like editing how they can get it down yes. to like such a short um there's so little copy 
but it's really straightforward yes. and it's really clear. And so my experience of like basically the 52 weeks of shawls is the only line of publication I think that I have mm -hmm. um, with the exception of this for this pattern. But you've knit a few from... I've knit a few from mm -hmm. um, from that. It's like, it's really simple yeah, and straightforward. And you don't feel like things are missing. But I did notice like in 52 Weeks of Shawls, I've never checked that rod. I didn't even know about that. Mm -hmm. There would be places where you're like, oh, the place marker is missing. But you like, you it. know. Yeah, you get right? it. Right? It's just like you, you're a moment. You, there, there's a moment of like, wait, like, why are there only three? Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's, you know four sections but I've only placed two markers like why is that but but it's evident that yeah. there was a, another this section one has so more it's like little than ones, that. does it it's more it's like in the short rows doesn't unless I've messed up which is totally possible um the short rows where things work didn't really quite work and there's a whole section that doesn't tell like where there's increases and it doesn't tell you how to to increase I'm just making the assumption that I'm going to increase in a certain way it's like missing like yeah. an entire paragraph huh well when I when I get this on the needle, yes, I won't tell if you. If there what it isn't is. errata, will like I can see this being a staple for me because mm -hmm. I love a deep dolman, mm -hmm. I love a twisted rib, Especially and just this fabric, fabric is just like I knit a lot of things twice, and I just feel like this is going to be a twofer. <laughs> so I'll probably um, know the errata for myself, and if I do that, then I'll make a Ravelry page and, and yeah. put it up um if it's not already there which I would be highly surprised Imagine. if it wasn't unless I'm just I mean honestly it could just be that it's right there and I'm not seeing it <laughs> that is so possible yeah like I was literally here talking and I was like I got distracted because the squirrel like was walking along the fence and then I'm literally like I know there was a squirrel there before but and then I'm like oh my god that's actually the cliche ADHD thing. you know like squirrel and I'm like I literally just did. Squirrel! <laughs> <laughs> like it really is. That's who I am. So it's very likely that all of the information is perfectly fine. Do you read there. through the pattern first? Ha ha ha! I know. I just asked it to be facetious. See, I can show you. Let's see. Like, anyway, I'm starting. I'm making little notes as if I was testing. That's what I would say. Right. You see, there's like yeah, an yeah. increase. Yeah. And you're like... Well, how did that happen? Right. And so I'm assuming I do it. Anyway. Um, oh, but it's so beautiful. It's a beautiful pattern. It's an easy pattern. It also it's is an easy pattern. That's the easy. other thing that the saving grace is it's if you've made, a raglan. Yeah. So if you've made a raglan, you're not having any problems with it. If yeah. this is your first raglan ever, it may be confusing, I guess, as it stands. Look yeah. at the errata. I also find, I find a raglan, I mean, I find cardigan, it, it's just about experience, right? Like yes. I don't knit that many cardigans and I recall which one it was it. I just remember like when you're knitting something, what was I knitting flat that had a raglan? Gosh, I don't know. But I was like confused mm -hmm. because because I'm so accustomed to raglan increasing in the round. Yes. And when you're flat, I'm like, yes. I get, I get, I was getting very confused about like going left or going right because I'm like I'm on the wrong side. So I should mm -hmm. be going right. No, I should be going left. Like my brain yeah. was like, eh, yeah, do not do this on, um, yeah, do not do this at the end of a long work day because you're going to end up having to rip it out because I mean, probably not because who cares if you put a left leaning increase instead of a right leaning that increase. That one doesn't matter. Yeah. But in here, right. like, I'm just remember, like, I'm like, one was like, you're short rowing back to like a certain marker and yeah. it was like a left marker, but it says the right marker. So when I'm in here, I kept going, but this is impossible because now I'm yeah. going back two stitches. Yeah. This doesn't make sense for short rows. Um, it's yeah. super exciting. It'll all be fixed. Just well, like actually the urus, right? So it's original. Yeah. In that case, I have a feeling this was a mix, like, because as you're saying, they're going to have to cut things down. Mm -hmm. There's editing. And I bet you in the editing process, things got lost or changed around. What happens? Or, I mean, yeah. you know, um, if there's a rata, we'll link it down below. Great. Um, yes. Because I'm going to need That'll to find it. That'll make me have to look it up. Yeah. Which I should be doing. But I'm like, I get it. You're not going to look it up. I'm going to look, look it up. up. I'm the one knitting the thing. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. But you figured it out. Figured you it have out. enough knitting I all in so. I like, figured it out. We'll see. Um, actually, that's a good segue into my other finished objects. Uh, Talking so. about raglans. <laughs> Yeah. How many? Which again, okay, so again, I just want to say. I'm going to have to change this chair. I feel like it's squeaky. It's squeaky. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, sometimes, 
So, so here's one of the things I, I, I might have said this in one of the other um, podcast episodes. I have usually 10 whips. Mm -hmm. So there's this like cycle in my knitting where I'm like, it looks like I have a lot of finished objects back to back to back to back. But really what's happened is like all of the whips are sort of at a, they're all at like 75. And then I go through, I get this like, it really is like a wave that comes over me that's like a finish wave. And I'm like, let me finish. I mean, I do knit a lot. It's no, true. I, <laughs> I, I just have something to say about this. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt. Yes, I, yes, I do. Um, when you first said this, that made lots of sense. Right. But at some <laughs> point, one of these episodes has to have you with hardly any knits then. That's never happened, right, people? I'm She's still always working got... through a backlog. I'm telling you, I'm still working through a backlog. Stop the stuff that I'm going to bring. It's so been a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. And these are the patterns that have been released within that year and a half. It's like, I call bullshit. <laughs> You have many whips yeah. and are ridiculously I'm, I'm prolific. Fast. Yeah, I do. I, I, I realize our friend was like, what were we talking about? That I was like, this is the funniest thing that I've ever heard. Um, oh, that they're like, we, we think that Jackie is like Mrs. Weasley and that there are knitting needles that are yes. going on like all of the yes. time. That was um, a brilliant insight. And I was like... I actually had a serious think about this. I was like, if you could have Mrs. Weasley knitting needles, for those of you who are not yes. like um, Harry Potter nerds like we are, Mrs. Weasley is a character and because it's a magical world, she there's this scene in the movie and also in the book where they talk about her having a magic set of knitting needles that's just like knitting the things. Mm -hmm. So she's not actually knitting. Would you no. want a magic set? No way. It's why I would never get a knitting machine. Oh, right. Definitely not. Yeah. I would like some magic that speeds me up. <laughs> I would like something that makes my hands go faster, but I would need my hands to be doing it. That's the whole thing. Yeah. That's also what I would, that's also what I like determined. I was like, I don't think I will, like, I don't want the magic needles to be knitting it. I no, want to be knitting it. I want to be knitting it. It's like saying, could somebody else knit it for me? Ooh, but next time I'm going to show my... Oh, I'm blanking it just right there. It was a um, Emily Green pattern that my mother made for me because I just couldn't take it. Oh my gosh, I, I know. Like the tensi tensile. tensile. <gasps> so beautiful. You want your mom to knit that for you? Oh, yeah, she did so it and it was in COVID. And I was like, mom, it was the beginning of COVID. And I was like, mom, I can't, like, I have no brain power. Yeah. I can't think about this. And she's like, I'll do it. And I said, I'm thinking I just really want this sweater and I just don't want to do it. <laughs> I'll wear it next time. You know what I think I could get? A sock knitting machine. Because I really don't like knitting socks. Fact of the matter is I, I mean, it's, yeah. It's like an okay process, but I'm never like, ooh, time yeah. to knit socks. The way that I I'm like, love, ooh, time yeah. to knit, so, like the small circumference or something. Um, just because you want knit yeah, socks. Yeah, because hand knit socks are amazing. I just don't think the knitting machine would do it because I, what I, the hand knit socks I like are not the like tubes that you then cut in and just right. do the cut afterthought, right? Yeah. Like I, I like a whole gusset thing. Would you, would you get a knitting machine, like not a knitting machine, but if you could have magic needles that were knitting for you, you wouldn't have magic needles that only did ribbing. You, I think you would have ribbing oh, needles. Oh, I would do that. You would totally do that. Yeah. And the body, <laughs> stockinette body. Like, if you wanted to finish this for me, I'd be like, yes, be my magic needles. Just finish it. I hate it. No, I don't hate it, but it's tiny. And it actually forever. is. Uh, US 2? US 2. If you, if those were, if that stitches. was a US 4, I would do it for you. It's US 2, and it's US a two very wide me. actual, and, and I, I cut down a little bit. I was, I was going to do more shaping, and I'm like, no, you know what? I really do like the picture of it where it's boxy. quite boxy. Yeah. But that means a lot of stitches. Yeah. I'm quite aware of how many stitches. Um, yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say. You were going to show that. us some, uh... Oh, right. Okay. So I have two simple stockinette sweaters and my disclaimer on is... Eights. No, they're not on US 8s. No. They're on small needles. Um, and what I wanted to say is that I did it in my defense, in case any of you think that I knit this and this and two fingering weight stockinette sweaters in since our last podcast episode, that's not the deal. Um, I did knit a lot of things though. <laughs> um. <sighs> we're gonna have to look up when these patterns were released. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, 
You're a liar. It's a liar. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> um, okay. So, <laughs> oh, and I always keep banging you guys with my knees. I'm just tall. It's just one of those things. Not to jinx it. One hour, almost 50 minutes. No bark yet. Not to jinx it. Oh, look at this lovely. So this is beautiful. <clears throat> this is the Scavatrum. Yes, I was gonna say like, by Frida Oscar. This is, I think, my Scavatrum. Yeah. Um, which is knit in one strand of neutral yarn and one strand of mohair. The um beautiful. colorway is spore sporja. S P O R J A, right. um, which is, is not pronounced that way. Um, yeah, I, I, hundred percent, hundred percent. So one strand of Newtonin and one strand of knitting for olive mohair mm -hmm. in the colorway, I believe, dusty artichoke. I'll oh, keep it in the comments. Yes. Um, Gorgeous. so I knit this for my trip to Iceland because I wanted a base layer. Yes, it's perfect. And this. I haven't done a lot of Newton and Mohair, and I get it. Mm -hmm. The mm. the I wore this the whole trip. It's so light. I used um, 166 grams of Newton and 82 grams of Mohair. Mm. The bust size is 40, um, and it's just it's like it's the like. If you've been here for a while, like, I feel like I went through this, like, phase of basically becoming obsessed with color work and color and, like, mosaic knitting, and I was doing all this, like, stuff. Um, at the end of the day, I feel like these simple mm -hmm. things are the things that I grab forever, yes. grab and, like, will wear forever. Yes. And this is one of them. Um, yes. This, the reason that I brought it, I mean, I'm like, okay, it's a, it's a sweater. No, it's a really great it's sweater. A, so here's the thing. I learned about a new proportion in, in knitting this sweater for me, which again, if you just look at this, like it's something that I'm aware of, but I think, um, I, I wanted to share it with you all because I think that it's something that leads to good sweater fit. Okay. Um, Ordinarily, I would say that a raglan fits me really well. Mm -hmm. And I'm really quite happy with this fit. I love the way that, I love the arms, I love the ease, everything about it I love. But I could not knit this pattern as written. Mm. This is where I realized the like yoke depth uh -huh. situation. Um, so there are two things. One of the things that I discovered is that like for me, not all raglan patterns are created the same. There are different ratios between yes. sort of the body and the, the sleeve part, like the yes. body things in the sleeve part. And you've knit this pattern. I knit this pattern because you knit it and yours for me was like a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. um, but this raglan starts really narrow. narrow. Mm -hmm. And so I followed the pattern um, as it was written with, um, and my gauge was really close to the pattern. And I got to like where the pattern was like split for sleeves. And I was like here. Oh. And I had to figure out sort of in my own way how I was going to get the raglan long enough. Yes. Because if I'd split for sleeves here, like I just wouldn't be able to have a sleeve. It wouldn't go under. It wouldn't go under. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think this is, you know, there are conversations about like biceps circumference, but for me, I don't think it's a biceps circumference issue. No. I think it's the depth of no, raglan that I need. It's this, it's you have this. to get it under I have your, to get it under my arm. Under your arm, absolutely. Um, and so I started to realize that raglans come in different, like there's two things that I have to look at if I'm gonna knit a raglan pattern. One is that for me, in order for me to get the right proportion of like sleeve to body, I need to have more stitches through the body like I need to start with more stitches through the body yes and I also cannot do a consistent raglan increase rate mm. so there's different mm -hmm. raglans right it's like how often do you increase and what part do you yep. increase and whether you're doing the sleeve or not or not in the body and stops. I realize that for me and my body I need something that those of you who are like 
um, prolific sweater knitters who understand construction are probably screaming, a compound, a compound raglan. I need a raglan that has more complex, that it's just not the same increase ratio yes. all the way down in order for it to fit. I mean, again, I love the sweater. It fits super well. It's beautiful. I love this detail it's down awesome. the side. Like that's, it's just amazing. Oh, no. um, but it made me start to think about in sweaters, like how am I going to accommodate the shape of my shoulder, yes. et cetera. And you know how we've had a lot of conversations about like round yokes. I think the exactly. reason why a round yoke fits me is because the increase ratio is correct. It's correct. Um, so I then went on a bit of a bender in terms of yeah. finding, <laughs> um, finding like looking at different sweater constructions yes. that were going to sort of fit the shape and that was going to have like the increases um, that were needed. But that is so cool. And it's making me want to try it on. Yeah, so that we can see yeah. with our different bodies, like how, how that, like, yeah, because we know how the one. Now, I always find like this spot trim that I knit was the earliest version. Like a lot changed. I yeah. haven't still, I still haven't knit the one that is final. Oh. Yeah, a lot changed um, in her testing because I did, did it. Did you test that one? I did, but I did it before anyone. She didn't even have a test done on it first by the time I was, like, when I, I did it first and then. Gave some feedback, but I also loved it. But then when, when the testers were knitting it, they were finding different things. I yeah. remember it. People were like, well, this doesn't work for this. This doesn't that. So yeah. things and I, would have the changed. Other thing that I want to oh, say sorry, as well, leave you guys. the other thing that I want to say as well is that there, um, what I realized is row gauge matters. Yeah. Well, especially in that. Oh, is this a, no, no what is this? This is no, new. This is a different one. Yeah. Oh, but this was part of my find the sweater fit. Okay. What am I doing here? This side. There's a stitch marker yes. in the back. Oh, look at the tiny little neck hole. It almost went <laughs> over me. The tiny neck hole? It's so tiny. It almost didn't get over my big head. Wait, whereas I feel like that ratio is so good for you. No. No? I don't think so. I feel like it's... Well, now you have the too much sleeve issue. Yeah. Because you extended it. Yeah. Right? Like it's just a little bit... It fit you really perfectly. Yeah. It's just so interesting to but me. Isn't the fabric lovely? It's so I mean, lovely. It so lovely. And interesting. Does this not fit me as well? No way. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting because I, I mean, I tried, didn't actually gauge swatch, um, but I, I tried to model this after yours mm -hmm. um, and I had the dimensions of your, of yours totally in terms of like, I'd measured out right. like all the things and it just didn't come out because we have different hands and different colorways of Newton, et cetera. But, this is it. And I um, did mine with single stranded. Yeah. With no mohair. No mohair. Um, Super interesting though. So I use Knitting for Olive mohair, which you and I, I think this have had a little bit of a conversation about like our preferred mohairs mm -hmm. and it's not one as good or bad. It's just like preference. Yeah. But do you notice there's like no halo on it? Like this was my thing. That's which, true. Oh, well, oh, like, this is this double is mohair, double. so it's so not, not going to be as fair, but you're accurate, right. But it, you're like, right. It does not, mm -hmm. particularly since it's Newtoden as well, because Newtoden already has a halo. Yeah. So you would imagine it would have an even like, I was really surprised. I mean, to be fair, I, I did, I've worn this like hiking and so I guess like hiking and layers I wonder if I like actually tamped down the the um mohair God. but yeah. what's really interesting to me is like you know like fleece like like technical fleece like a lot of like oh like fleece. Patagonia yes. or like, like yes. you know like the north face or like fleece. the fake fleece, <laughs> the fleece the is fake, like a fleece yes. um, <laughs> thing. there's something about the combination of knitting for olive um, mohair plus this particular um, thing of um, this particular mm -hmm. blend of Newtonin that to me is, it's made the perfect fleece. Oh, like it's so warm. Like it's so it's warm. It's so light. It's so light. That's it's such a feel. good base layer. What is like this about this pattern because that's exactly how I feel about my spectrum, even though it's completely different. Yeah, it's just a perfect. I think it's the thin. It's very light. It's very fitted. It's the perfect thing. So I mean, I. I'm not ruling out this pattern. I right. already have it um, and I love the oh, little details it of it. I think it fits yeah. me well. I sadly did not take any notes, but I think the next time that I'll make it, I'm gonna try and sh shift this so that my raglan sort of starts more here and sort of yeah. see what happens. Yeah, um, you would just change the increases. The increases. And I'm, I'm gonna change the increases yeah. um, to see, like but. That. So what is this? Okay, so this, I laughed at myself. 
because <laughs> I hacked this pattern and then today before I came when I was like trying to um put together things because I knit these in like March and April I was like oh what's the pattern what's the designer when I went back to actually get the details about the pattern I realized Jackie you didn't need to hack this pattern because the <laughs> designer literally made has a pattern that is a sweater <laughs> <laughs> there were, did it come out after or did it, uh, it no, was already No, it was always there. <laughs> oh, it was always just there. do your thing. This is beautiful. Um, this is, so this is my new, um, this is my new fit. So I love that. Mm -hmm. I love this. But can you see this like line? Mm -hmm. I do. It's beautiful. Like, I feel That's like beautiful. this is the perfect yes, line. I agree. And the perfect fit. Okay, wait a second. What is this? I want it. So this... <laughs> Wait a second. What? This is the Colette T. Oh no, the I'm I'm blanking on the designer. Hang on, hang on. What? I know, I know. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> so ah, what's the designer's name? I want to say it's okay. This is why I was confused. This is the Colette T by Witra Design. Not to be confused by the Colette T. I'm sorry, sorry Norlin. Norlin. Um, this one is Colette, C-O-L-L-E-T-T -T without the E. Okay. And it is supposed to be here. It's a t-shirt. Yeah, this doesn't look like what you've knit. This is a, it's a t-shirt. Yeah. But I remember um, seeing um, Jackie Rose from Kelly Jack's Knit knit <gasps> a sweater. Yes. Out of Big Birdie, I think. And I remember seeing this, this line. Gorgeous. And thinking to myself, I love this line. Mm -hmm. So this wool is low mileage wool from Brittany of Crux Fibers. Yay. It is a BFL Gotland cross um, and it was Cease and Maz. Um, if you've been here before, Carmen and I were in love. <clears throat> have a love affair with low mileage wool. Yes. Um, this is wool that comes from Sierra, who's Crocus Country Shepherdess. Um, she's in Alberta, and she has a flock of Gotland BFL crosses that um, she just, like, loves and mm. tends to and takes care of in such an amazing um, way. And Brittany um, is based out of the Yukon, but she has a, essentially been working with this flock, sort of, like, adopting all the fleeces from these um, the flocks and getting it milled, um, I think, most recently at Wellington Fibers, which is in Ontario. And... Part of what I adore about this wool is not only the story around it and the ethos behind it, but it is the most glorious spun wool. It really in my makes opinion. a fabric that's unlike it. It makes else. a fabric unlike anything else. And you know, one of the things that I was contemplating through this process of all of this like color play and making all these like fun and bright and exciting light colors, I'm like, the my tessellated is so bright and fun, but it is for me. It is for me. <laughs> But I, I started to recognize as I was accumulating garments, I'm like, I want to always have like a heritage knit on the needles. Mm, like the idea of having a, something that is not only functional, but also like incredibly like classic yes. and something that will like just make it through the years. Because I, I have store-bought things, you know, like a merino turtleneck. There's like a part, there are things that are just like staples. Yes. And I was like, I would like to fill my... Um, I would like to move towards having handmade staples. Yes. And so when I acquired this yarn, I sat with it and sat with it. I was like, it has to be something super special. And yeah. I was like, you know, what do I love more than anything else in the world? A light gray sweater, 100%. like a light gray plain sweater. Yep. And so that's what I decided um, to do. And I was thinking about not, I, I was like, I don't think um, I want a raglan because I don't have a pattern that perfectly fits me, particularly yes. at this like teensy weensy gauge because this was a sport weight yarn and it needed to be top down because I was playing yarn chicken. Mm -hmm. um, and so Coletti. I love it. Um, so it's a t-shirt pattern. Um, the construction is really quite interesting. You have this like, I don't know what, I don't know how to say it. It's like a contiguous, maybe it's like contiguous, and then it turns into a raglan. So it has like well, a combined shaping. Has like I think, like I it's not a it saddle. I don't know what it is. It's not a saddle or contiguous. I don't think it's like a. It almost looks like it's been seen. Like the, it, yeah, like but it, it's not. You it's kind not. of like it's the it's how you increase. Are you increasing just what? What are you increasing? Like you're increasing right beside each other. 
Yeah, close to. Right beside them. Yeah, like you As have a, you have like you some, have some ink, like it's top middle. down, you do the ribbing, then there's a certain yeah. way that you increase, and then there's another then way, that, and then and that's the, where the, in, the increase ratio is. changes. And so there's three ratios, actually. Yes. Where you like increase at a certain interval, then you increase at a certain interval, and then yeah. you increase at a certain interval, and there's, yeah. um, it's a little bit less, how will I say it, like, like... Some raglan patterns, it's like you're doing the same thing every other row. Yeah. This one, you do actually have to like count what mm, rows you're right. in. So it, it is, um, it requires a little bit more concentration. But I just love this fit so much. Mm. And I feel like it is going to be in my wardrobe. Yeah. Forever. It is. And so this isn't, you didn't help hold this with no hair no. or anything. So um, I, I... <laughs> finished this and I thought that I would bring it on the podcast but I actually held myself back because I I have a hat that I knit out of low mileage wool that I thought that I loved when I first cast it off um but the more that I wore it the this wool ages there's something right. about this it's this better. Gotland BFL cross that like ages in a way that I can't explain like it just gets better oh. and it gets this like it's a little bit of a halo like you can it see is. it's like a little bit of a halo Completely. and there are a sort of like you know like I can take yeah. this off but it creates this like super soft and drapey but also like it's uh, the structure is like I feel like it's it's like a really solid fabric that's gonna last me forever and ever it's, so it's just gonna get better um and I just love it so, so I much. I just cannot believe that this is like a sheep, like no. two sheep, like two, two sheep. sheepies. Like, yeah, two sheepies. Is one like, are they both the same color? Like, because yeah, there's this like, it's all, like, it's, I don't know, is it heathered? Like, yes, like is one a darker gray and one's a lighter gray? Like, I mean, it has combined? to be, right? Like, I because mean. Because it's absolutely like, it makes me think of a mohair added. There's almost a blue undertone to it. Like, yeah. I just love it. It's the perfect icy. Oh. And I do think that, like, there's something about the gray, a, a Gotland gray. Yes. It that is, is cool like, gray. a cool gray. Mm -hmm. That's just so gorgeous. Um, yeah, you almost think about, like, Sweden. You know, like, it's got a cool, like. Yeah, like, it just. Cool breeze <sighs> sheep. <laughs> and so when I, I traveled with this sweater and this sweater. And this one is, if you can believe it, this one is warmer, but more breathable than that one. Oh, interesting. Um, huh. It just makes the most incredible fabric. And so this was 300 grams. Um, it's cropped and the arms are short because I ran out of yarn. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, but if you're like looking for like the classic sweater, I highly recommend this pattern. I also oh highly recommend um, low mileage wool. Mm -hmm. um, so Brittany, is she I having think, another release? Yes, soon? I think like I think she just got or is getting the next like batch from yes. the mill, so it's coming. And you know, this is my cashmere sweater. Yes. And I would rather I would you know I, I do have cashmere. I've knit with it, and a million times over, I would choose this over cashmere. Yes. I just think that there's it's something wonderful. about the texture. I'm not that even a knitter, but this yarn makes you seem like you have the most it even is. stitches in the entire world. Oh um, my God. What I will say was interesting that took me some time to get used to though, was it doesn't have as much elasticity yes. as like some other breeds like or like, like a Merino BFL or like or a something. BFL or, yeah. or like a Rambouillet, right? It's yes. not like bouncy like that. Um, so there was like a little bit of getting used to like my hands getting used to it, but it was just a joy to knit mm. and it's an even bigger joy to wear. And this is kind of the, this is the sweater that I want to put on basically all the time. Well, speaking of which I'm like, and when am I going to try it on? on? Yeah, right. Um, so <laughs> the, right there now. is, some, there is, I'm like, this is a, what do we call it? A flip. It's a finished object, but it's also a work in progress because uh -huh. I was playing such intense yarn chicken that I bound off like the bind off at the bottom is definitely too tight. <laughs> oh, it might, it might not even make it over me then. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you can't But you know tell. what happened is because it's really tight, it sort of sometimes crops itself. And I yeah. thought to myself, do I want to crop it? Oh, you could. It's so cute as it is though. Um, it's but I, I do need to. Okay, maybe I shouldn't. It. What if I like stretch it? It's fine. I I, um, I might not be able to get this I on. I have extra 
I have like this teeny tiny amount that I'm like, I'm pretty sure I can bind it off again with just a little bit more space. <laughs> um, but yes. Oh my gosh. Let's see. And I'm like, I hope it fits. Teeny tiny podcasting partner. <laughs> it reminds me of, um, there was a, which sweater is it? <clears throat> Your Claire de Lune, which you so lovingly gifted to me. Oh, sure yes. Here. Um, that, uh, like, it's a task to get it over Ooh. your head. <laughs> I totally see. It was hard to get it over it's the hard. girdles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a process of... Oh, it is a very tight little... It is a tight, it's a tight uh, bind off. Ooh. But otherwise, oh, it's, gorgeous, it's amazing. So I, um, so it's a hack of the Colette tee. So the Colette tee, norm, like once you split for sleeves in the Colette tee, you just go straight to ribbing. And I just mm -hmm. kept knitting the arms. Oh, yes. So this is done to pattern. This is her, this, this is, is her, her increase is. ratio. Um, and then I just, and then I just kept knitting and I did do a couple of decreases, but not a ton. Mm. I think I maybe placed like four decreases along the arm, but I love this construction. I love this construction, like, but I, I'm going to need like you to help me. I feel like it works well for you as well. I think this is too, too deep for me. Yeah. So I, I, I did her that. increase ratio. I did as, as I'm discovering, I need to, I really need to do actually irrespective of the, the sort of compound like the changing increase intervals is that I had to knit a little bit I need to, to knit this a little bit longer which on my body it, it, fits, it fits really this fits you perfectly that's the that's the genius of a top down you just keep trying it on and steaming it and trying it on and being I like heard of this. <laughs> That or you can have like measurements. That sounds like advice I might have heard once or twice. <laughs> it's so good. But I still, I, I, I love, love this color line. though. I, I also think line. there's something this. like, a, it, it, to me, it's like, not that a raglan isn't chic, but you know, I was thinking oh, like no. Melissa Clulo aesthetic. Yes, this is, like, this, this is, totally is the perfect Melissa. work sweater. And I love, exactly. I love how it goes, ex, it's here. It's and then just, just this, this is so It just beautiful. like wraps the shoulder in such a beautiful oh, way. Yes. And, you know, the average person is going to look at the sweater and not think anything of it. But more importantly is, like, how I feel about it and how I just feel really elegant in I it. I think the average person may matters. not know it, but they would they would look at you and be like, wow. Like, they would, and they wouldn't know why they're looking at you, maybe. Yeah. They wouldn't necessarily say, well, it's because of the sweater she's wearing. Yeah. But they, you would, you just look. And I, this is why I like how we can change, like, we can try on each other's things because it doesn't look as good on me. Like, and, I, and that's totally good. Like, I mean, it, it I shows. It amazing. I don't think it does, actually. I don't, no. I, well, it looks fine. Yeah. But I, there would be things like, if you were to see this, I think you would have knit it differently for me. Yeah. I would have And it fits you perfectly. Yeah. Like, so perfectly. I do also think there's something that happens, particularly with more rustic wools, mm -hmm. where it begins to shape to the body, right? So I've been wearing this for, like, months, and True. I do think that it has literally molded itself yeah. um, to fit my, my body. But mm -hmm. I, you know... This color. How did I not end up with this? I mean... Okay, Brittany. <laughs> Brittany, I'm already ordering... I'm putting Get a hole, four skeins. a Get four, four skeins, skeins of this, these guys. <laughs> I hope you put these guys together again. Um, that's so exciting. So we've been sort of low mileage wool. There's like a spring clip and a fall clip. And um, when Brittany sends the fleeces to Adonna at Wellington Fibers, Donna sort of combines the fleeces on the basis of like, what's the most yeah. beautiful yarn she can make. And so it's been super fun um, because we've had the opportunity to sort of try and fall like I've actually I'm, I'm following this I'm following Cecil um in terms of I have this and then I and then the next sort of batch of low mileage wool I'm gonna get Cecil um nice. fleece again and sort of experience how it changes from year to year but I think that the blends are different in terms of which fleeces they put together so yes. I don't think no, I don't know. Who knows? You know what? Brittany's um, a master. Brittany's too. a master. So she'll be like Carmen like it maybe this is what this it's one, like this right? will be you want um, this but I'm planning on this release to, I want like a, that like deep, dark Gotland BFL oh, mix. Yes. And I want a dark thing. Me too. And this yarn mm. is good enough that I was knitting at sport weight on mm, US 3 needles. And 
it's so enjoyable. How did you so do US3? I'm a really loose knitter. No, I mean, it, like, it should have been smaller, shouldn't it? Like, how? Because usually sport the sport weight pattern. Weight, sport mm -hmm. weight, like, I mean, mine's sport weight, and it's, that's, I'm doing it on twos, and I am a tighter knitter than you. Like, how does that work? I, Gotland BFL Blooms. Oh. So that's the other thing about this, is when I was knitting, so I did knit a swatch, because I wanted to, this one, I wanted to get it right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Ouch. I'm getting focused. Is that the um, <laughs> And uh, I, so I did swatch it and there was a huge difference between pre-blocking and post-blocking. Okay. And when I, because when I was knitting and I was looking at it and I was like, is this going to be not um, tight enough? But right. I, it's, for me, it's perfect. And then it stuck. Yeah. It kind of came in. Yeah. It is lovely. I it, love it's it. It's so much more lovely on you. Thank you. Gorgeous. Well, I, th you know, I think sometimes I just cast stuff on um for the joy of like knitting it mm -hmm. and then sometimes I get very technical mm. and what I notice is when I take the time to get technical about fit you're the happiest I feel like I feel like the best version of myself in mm. the sweater do you know what I mean you're almost convincing me <laughs> <laughs> it's like I almost think I could <laughs> swatch and try on and change accordingly. But I you know should. how you have that perfect pair of jeans yes. that you just like, like I call them my superhero jeans yeah, that like when I put saying. on those, you just yeah, like, like these, ones are good. these are so good. And I think that that also impacts, at least for me, the way that I feel about myself and wow. like how I'm moving around in the world. And it's, and so it's not. Like, yes, part of, his, of it is aesthetic, but I think the other part of it is just, like, the process of, like, owning mm -hmm. your shape and your size. <laughs> yes, doing it for... Doing it for you. 100%. Like, making those modifications and finding a fit that you like, which is mm -hmm. totally personal preference. Yeah, right? I agree. I can, it's really rational. <laughs> But I mean, I, and like part of me, part, part of me loves the process of like sorting it out. Yeah. Right. And then definitely there's a part of me that's like, man, like I have to use stitch markers and yes. I can't just like knit, knit, knit while I'm reading my book or like, yeah, see, I like you that. know, listening to a lecture or whatever. Like I actually have to, I'm like grown. I need to like pay Maybe attention, pull things, and out too. pull things out and that kind of stuff. But for me in the end, um, I'll do it for a certain number of patterns because I want that like heritage. Yeah. That heritage. And I can see piece. this. Like this reminds me of something that you would be store that would be store bought. Like it looks it looks like that. Right. I don't think people would think this was hand knit. No. Yeah. And it's that the part of it is part of the reason I chose to do it with this particular wool is because I knew that that wool was it's just such a luscious fabric. Yes. And we don't think of BFL Gotland as being like a luxury thing. Yeah. But I was like, to me, it is luxury. It's and it will just cast one on. Right and away. it will hold up in a way that my like and like luxury merino or like luxury cashmere like yeah. I don't think it's gonna hold up. I have one cashmere sweater that I was gifted and it pills like a mofo. Yeah. And so it looks Everybody great for like that. a month yeah. and a half and you're like, ooh, it's cashmere and I paid like gadillion yeah. dollars for it. I mean, I'm gifted, but I like, yeah. but this I'm like, when we have that special skein, mm -hmm. those special skeins of yarn, like yeah, I think it's worth, it. it's worth it to think about Am I gonna use this for something like really show stopping, right? Like am I gonna use this for my tessellated? Or am I gonna use it for like a basic a classic. classic sweater? Yep. I think it's a good point. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, so super happy with that one. And then while we're talking about low mileage wool, I'm gonna show one more thing. And then and then I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, you're not. <laughs> Come on. Do you have anything else? Oh, I still have to, I, I do feel like I should talk about yeah. this. Yeah. So, but do you want to do your thing? No, no, then? you go. Oh. So speaking of because, classic sweaters. Yes. This is a sweater that I feel like falls in the category of classic. That yes. I um, don't know why I haven't knit. But I feel started, like you right? came down. No, I feel oh. like you came down. I saw you in it today and I was like, why have I not knit this pattern? Yes. You need to knit this pattern. Um. This, well, and the reason, I mean, people are going to know this pattern. I'm not going to have to speak very long about it. But I feel like if 
I started the op episode with it on. <laughs> Should we we'll talk about what it is? Hey. So this, if you haven't seen, is the Felix Pullover by Savory Knitting, Amy Christoffers. Which I guess I should stand up a bit. Ugh. Now, there's a few cautionary tale. Well, one cautionary tale cautionary that I have, <laughs> I have talked about with New to Din and necklines, mm -hmm. particularly yeah. Amy's necklines, is that she tends to have, from what I can see, they're, they're larger. They tend yeah. to be wider necklines to begin with, but New to Din, here, I'm just going to get on my knees. How about that? <laughs> New to Din really stretches. I right now. I saw. That's true. Well, I'm still taller. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, it just really stretches. So um, you have talked about like actually casting on less stitches yeah. and then increasing and or small, even smaller needle size mm -hmm. than what people might be mm -hmm. suggesting. I think that makes a big difference. But, uh, but I do like... The sweater though, in, it's, it is body. It like, has a body, but it's not, it's not this body. This body. When I usually wear it, the reason I like this tank top, I needed it for some of the other things I was wearing, but usually I would wear something that would be more of a, like a tank underneath that would try to be under this. Like, I don't know that I love this look. It's actually why I don't love, I haven't knit the weekender, like, because yeah. I don't love the uh, thing right under it. You just don't like a bowdy neckline. I don't, well, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I do. Um, but this is such a beautiful, easy sweater to wear. Like it's so fast to knit it. I knit it in Newtoden. Part of what I also wanted to show is Newtoden over time. Oh, Berry Tog, Berry Tog, or something. Yeah, I think it's it a, might be. It's like a totally natural sheep's color, right? Yes, exactly. Um, this is kind of how it holds up, right? Like, so it it has, and I mean, every Newtoden blend is different. Um, but there's definitely like pilling. But to me. I don't know. It's just like lovely. It's like it's a it's a sheepy sheepy sweater, right? Like that's what I they find do. for me my Newton pills a lot at the beginning and if I take the time to not yes. like I don't use a green or anything, I just kind of like Pick do one of these. It yes. does stop. So I have, have you, not done have that. You like <laughs> Thank you for asking as if you didn't know. Um no, of course not. I have not done anything. I, mean, I don't I, I don't manage no anything. Sure. Um so in this pattern, this is sort of the cl the claim to fame, I think, of the pattern. These like, it's hard to see here. Sorry, maybe if I had it on the their black. Their eyelet. Their eyelet increases yeah. done in specific ways so that you get this like really, maybe on the back. It's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. Like, isn't that just a lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely thing? And I added eyelets this across the This to me is the genius. Oh. I, I when I knit mine I'm doing the same mod I just yeah it's just it was so easy but because I liked the eyelets up here I was like well I kind of wish there was something down here so I just added that but I'm pretty sure I probably knit it to pattern other than that yeah and it's just a really great this morning I threw it on because I was like I'm running to school it's cold, it's got like, you know, like there's just a little bit of a bite in the air. I just want an easy sweater to put on. Yeah. So anyway, Felix pullover, highly recommend it, really love it. And then I was like, well, I might as well show my other Felix because I did the Cardi too. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about um, the specs. Oh. So <clears throat> the gauge is 14 stitches by 20 rows. Um, it's yeah. knit on a US uh, 10. Oh, this one's showing better. And Oh, yeah. There so you go. Can, there you can really the, see that. See the um, increases. It's, again, it's like, it's that like, it's a classic silhouette with just a little touch of something. Um, and I adore this gray. I mean, I of love course I'm obsessed too. with gray, but um, like there, the like brownie, the, it, there's like a little brown undertone. Yes. But it's like gray. Ugh. I like it. I know. There's something about that sweater that you can throw on over a pair of jeans. 100%. That just feels so nice. Like it just feels so nice. 100%. So nice. And this one is, again, my, my feeling about the sweater, the pullover turned cardigan issue, which is right here. Right? It's Bodhi. I Well, it's Bodhi, but I also, I have to do it up. Because if, so like done up, it's nice. 
right? Like yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And again, yeah, I'll just show that little detail because it's just so beautiful, that piece. But I can't just leave this open. Like I could do, now in her picture, I think she opens it like kind of half and does like, she opens, sort of just does like a bit. I think the other thing keep them, is um, that one of the amazing things about Newton is um, the drape for me. Mm -hmm. And so here's where I think it's drapiness maybe doesn't um, help, doesn't help the way that you like a, a neckline to sit. That and also it. just the, I think in a cardigan, I like a V. Yeah, you love a V. Because otherwise, like, like, look at it. What do we do? I think you will. I, I think when I see, day, when I like, see people who do that, I feel like they're people who like to wear a, a crew neck under. Like, like they're, it's, it's almost like it makes me think of a twin set, right? They're, oh. I've seen people wear the cardigan and I love it. And what I notice is that their neckline like echoes the angle of the cardigan neckline. So they have a like this kind of boaty yeah. kind of neckline. But Although I do kinda... think yours is particularly boaty. I think so, and that again would be the new to didn't prob not problem, but I didn't. But that's one for of that. the yeah. I find for me, it whenever I do like generally speaking, when I do ribbing, I go down two needle sizes. Mm -hmm. Like on the then regular, what they then suggest like no, just the difference oh, between yeah. your body needle size and your I think that's um, pretty standard. And your ribbing needle size, it's typically like two, mm -hmm. um, two sizes down. Whereas with Newton, I go down four. I think that just makes for sense. the up for the top. Yeah. Um, because I find that it does um, relax, and because Newton, one of the things I love about it is, is its tendency to sort of like mold to the shape. What's mm -hmm. going to happen is it's going to come and meet your shoulder, as opposed to like this, for example, like the ribbing holds itself up. Yeah. Right. Like of course, it has molded to me, of course, a little bit, but it, it has its own sort of structure. Whereas Newton just molds to you. I right. Agree. And I think part of it also is um, the way that sleeves pull necklines like this. Yes. So the other thing that I'm curious about is how often that you you do this with the sleeve. Because there's a sweater that I knit out of Newton where I tip it, where for whatever reason, I'm often doing this. And I'm like, the neckline is getting larger and larger and larger, like the more that I wear it. Interesting. I don't, I don't think you do with this one. I, I wonder if you do it for the other one. Maybe. Um, but the, the boatiness is, again, this, I do think part of this is about shoulder shape. Yeah. And as right? I'm sitting here, it's again, one of these times where I'm like, wait a second. I don't know. I, I kind of like this. I think it's cute. It's cute. Um, Maybe I've just like been thinking something that's not real. <laughs> I can't believe that would ever be the case. Um, so if I, if um, you look at the sample of the, oh, how do we do this? I always forget how to there do this. Go. There we go. Ah. <laughs> I think you're just seeing my backyard. <laughs> um, if you look at the the sample, it's really Bodhi. You're right. And that's, uh, right. and that's, again, like a personal preference. But I do think, like, mm -hmm. I, I think that when I knit this, I'm going to um, cast on fewer stitches and do a tighter rib. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm almost positive is going to happen is I'm going to have to put in an extra raglan increase. Yeah. Right? Because then the, the distance from here to here is shorter than if I want it up like yes. that. Yes. That makes sense. It does um, make sense. But it is such a classic sweater. Our friend Leanne from the Knitty Stew just knit. Oh yes, one in Lucra, and she oh, did that so mod beautiful. where she um, cast on fewer stitches yes. and did the increase. And I, I mean, I that like a tight neck neckline. That's my preference. Um, I have literally just changed my mind completely about this. <laughs> just looking at myself. <laughs> Isn't it funny though? I mean, we've had this conversation it's so a million pretty. times. It's ridiculous. Where and pretty. it is ridiculous and pretty. And I love where it the lands island, yeah. on my like shoulder. Because a lot of people, by the way, don't like that. They wish it was. Some people make mods to make it go more here <coughs> because it it's so it's yeah. really on the outside. But I just am like, oh, like why see, I, I feel this? like the, this sits on your shoulders in a really pleased. There's a, like there's like a line, and our shoulders are shaped differently, and we have different shoulder slopes, yes, and so completely. you know, like. It, there, there are these little things that, um, and it's making, I think my pressed flowers is like, I love how slouchy that one is, which is also an Amy Christopher's mm -hmm. and one of my favorite sweaters. Now that I'm putting this back on, I'm feeling like it has that feel to it, which I love that feel. Yeah. 
<laughs> I love it. Okay, I mean, I love it from the moment that you, but I, I do think we've had this conversation where like often we, we knit things. Yeah. Then we like try it on after we've like blocked it. And then we have like a thought about it. Yes. And then it's almost it like you, stays you, it's, it. you stay with that thought as opposed to like yeah. it. And I, I do believe one of the things that's so lovely about wool is that your garments age. Yes. There's this process where like the, where the wool gets to know your body and the way that your body moves and it changes yeah. and so i think that like garments do look different over time i think so too right you get the ageness of um of like this one is starting to develop that like mm -hmm. halo that really was not present when i first cast it off it's right it's like the wool it's the patina of a wool yeah like that's what it is and that's inclusive of like you know necklines changing and yeah. and you know has anybody had like oh the sleeves are perfect and then and then you block it and then like over time somehow it's like I know my arms aren't getting longer like <laughs> it's not my arms but like that's true you know it what does, I mean it does kind of it like it starts a, to accommodate for your elbow it's a or something thing it's a, in some way right like it really yeah. is like yeah. um that's really interesting and it's, it's nice when the patina is desired yes. you know and then there are some knits um, where not. maybe the patina is not desired and you have to get out your gleaner or it the way that it I a sh sh um, fits on you sort of changes over time. But I think, I, I do think that part of the reason I love Newton so much is because I think it shapes to you yep. more than any Similar. other wools yeah. because of its unspun <laughs> nature and also the, the sheep breeds is it really sort of starts to, there's, there is, a dynamism to it for me 100 percent. whereas and i the find magic and the magic of it right so it's so real. maybe i need to do the cut again i should do you want to try it on yeah i don't even want to take it off i feel like i'm just like this is what i want to look like <laughs> <laughs> this thing that i never really paid attention to and would just throw on I'm like oh it's left me oh, it's, it's gonna be massive on, on you oh look oh my god it's so cozy oh my god it's so cozy it's so cozy it's so cozy Mm. see you feel the need right to yeah, I like feel the need. but I mean, I when i left it open <laughs> that's true i actually think i'm gonna try to keep wearing it and leave it open and maybe over time i'll like it more yeah is that my intention it's way too big for you big. what size did i make probably two so you should definitely not make a two i'll figure it out um okay what else is there so i wanted to show two Say it, two other things quickly and then I wanted to crowdsource some ideas mm -hmm. about the next thing that I'm gonna knit after the turtle dove um, that I'm super excited to knit but couldn't find the right combo of yarn for um, okay so mm -hmm. speaking of classics to me Jackie mm -hmm. Rose's Saturday Shrug mm -hmm. is a total classic um, I think she's dropping a new one today. I saw that, yes. Um, which I'm super excited about. It's like, for me, this is the perfect pattern. It's so beautiful. Um, but she then, has such a beautiful aesthetic too. And when you think it can't get better, it gets better. Because what she's done is, so see how this is like a rectangle? Yep. What she's done is, I think the new version, She it's called the cinch. And so the top is going to sort of come in closer, which nice. like, this Sometimes. lover of turtlenecks and mock necks is like, oh my god, it's so good. Anyhow. Um, the, so this is one of those knits that I'm like, if you were to just look at it, um, you'd be like, oh, it's a three color shrug and that would be okay. But to me, this is super duper duper precious, um, because I spun this. So Brittany, oh, yes. um, with the part of so what she did with some of the fleeces from the last Gorgeous. clip or the oh. one prior to that, oh, um, she put together something called spin a flock, which she does once a year. I think once a year, maybe twice a year, Brittany, let us know. I think it's only once. Um, oh, where Brittany. some of the fleeces, um, she turns into roving and then she um, oh. offers it as a, like sort of a little sampler pack. Um, so I, this is 250 grams mm -hmm. of um, 10 different sheep fleece combinations of all different kinds of um, breeds. It's so there's amazing. BFL Gotland. Um, and then, so the, the, Flock is predominantly BFL Gotland crosses, but of course crosses have like different mm -hmm. like 
components. more BFL, like the fleece comes out and it's more BFL, has more BFL characteristics versus more Gotland characteristics. Yes. Then there's some Dorset and some Shetland and some Iceland, Icelandic that's in there. So um, what I did is I, this was like a little experiment for me to see what would happen if I basically split each like 25 gram roving in half. Okay. And then I spun it sort of um, on two separate bobbins. Yeah. And so rather than having like 10 skeins. Yes. What I did is oh. I just ordered it in terms of the- Oh, um, beautiful. And just, <clears throat> that's so smart. The, the like gradient. I made a little gradient mm -hmm. from like darkest to lightest. And I just did sort of like 10, um, 12.5 grams of each onto one bobbin. Onto one bobbin. Yes. And so it was really fun because um, it was like that that, that Moorish because it's just like a, a small when, when amount of fiber next? and yes. what, it's, what it's gonna go to next. And then it, it was the process of, cause I did one bobbin and then another, like I didn't go back and forth yep. because I knew that I was just like, I think oh. all of these fibers are gonna play together. Yeah. So instead of doing it so that I had like one skein of one fleece, one skein of another fleece, right. I was gonna have all kinds of overlap between the fleeces. And I was like, I think that's okay. Yes. And this is what I came. Oh, it's with. so cool. Um. And it is like, oh, feel it. I, I was, as soon as I touched it, I was like, are you kidding? Like, to it's me, so, it's so squishy. It's so heavy. Yeah. Like you would never, I mean, this weighs the same as your, like that sweat, like 250, yeah. the scotch, the Tesla. Yeah. And the Tesla did this. Yeah. Like you would never think, right? But, but like ribbing oh, and it was on. so, put on. Ah. It was so interesting. You'll find that I have ribbing problems or cast off problems once again, but, um, it was oh, so how do you interesting. wear it? Is it like, like a cowl only or like do you put it? Uh, for me, I can scooch it over my shoulders. <laughs> There's one everywhere. Um, no. But I <laughs> Not my shoulders. like, it was yeah. so fun to kind of like have to experience the, the difference in the fleeces. Like even when you had like a BFL Gotland with a BFL Gotland, mm -hmm. um, the moment that you that I switched fleeces, it would be like a whole different sort of spinning experience. And I kind of just let it go how it wanted to. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't managing it to try and get it at a particular gauge at all. Mm -hmm. um, I was just like, I'm gonna let it spin however it spins and then I end up holding everything double. Yeah, for the Saturday Shrug. Oh, gotcha, okay. Cause so I, and I really do and think it's nice double. and consistent, like you're spinning. Although, right, that would make sense because you're doing it on one bobbin. Cause I'm like, wow, it really is. Whereas if you had changed bobbins each time and then had to boot, I think you're right. Yeah. It would have probably been different because it would be different. But I like, this is, this is the flock. It's is it a, does flock. it have a thing? Is it like reversible? It is technically reversible. Um, this is where I started to do <laughs> the tubular bind off and Ooh. my tubular bind off. I've done three times and it's still too tight. And I was just like, I can't, it's another flip. I'm just like, I can't. What do you mean I, it's too tight? Like. You'll, you'll see when I try it on. Okay. Um, like like you can't get it over your shoulders. Oh, the because shoulders. Because the can't. bind off is too tight. Yeah. The actual, like it's, it's one by one ribbing. So it Cute totally, though, but it like, is. isn't it glorious? Yes. <laughs> I love it as it is. And like, oh, you know, no. Jackie's, Jackie's shrugs, she has done a lot of like really bright colored mm. versions. Mm. And I get like, there's something to me about this natural, just great like black gray white that to me it's beautiful. feels so like it's timeless Whew. let's get all the fuzz. fluffs yep there's a lot of fluff. uh, so yeah like there's different ways oh, like see it looks way better on you very nice good on it as i think it's like worth as a cowl yep and then um i mean my favorite way to wear it is as a shrug can i get it over? it's this is so this is a bit of a task yes. because my bind off is too tight. Yes. And I have tried three times and I just can't quite get it. But oh, like, it is cute like that. Isn't it cute? It is so cute. You can do it. That's, that works. But you yeah, probably can't works. put your arms up. I can't up. put my arms up. This is like a just <laughs> sit Christmas quietly story. kind of yeah, situation. <laughs> anyway. But like... I, there's something about this like color combo and then yeah. this is and the Gotland is. and Icelandic like the, the kind of black that you get from Icelandic fleece and Gotland fleece that yes. I just, that's why I'm like, I want a classic sweater in this color. Oh, it's so um, beautiful. But I just love it. And, and like, again, this is one of those things that I think, 
um, is a classic and has a story in it. Yeah. And um, although it, it it's not so like, I feel like it's not as visually stunning as like the pressed flowers that has so much going on in it that yeah. makes you like stop in its like dynamic complexity. Yeah. This is something that I know will be with me. Oh, it's beautiful. Right? And it comes from Brittany and from yeah. Tara and then you spun it. And, and it's like, the whole flock. It's the whole flock. I wish I had done mine. We'll you see, still but... can. Oh yeah, um, just add it to the list. <laughs> add it to the list, but yeah. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Sheep's gray. It's the best kind of color. Absolutely. Um, so Don't my mess with Mother Nature. Low mileage wool. Classic sweater. Oh. Low mileage wool. It's been Spun. a flock. Shrug. Shrug. Gorgeous. You know? Ready for fall. Ready for fall. I actually, um, my favorite way to wear this was like a bit of an accident. I was, um... I had brought it somewhere with me and like a, like it was summertime and I had like a white dress mm -hmm. and um, I was working on it and then I got a little bit cold and I like put it on over a white dress oh, and it just like beautiful. made my white dress like, it was like it really elegant. It. it just finished it in a really nice way, which, Aww. you know, that's not the look here, but these shrugs, there's something about them. I agree. <coughs> Jackie, a uh, number of episodes ago, um, knit me one. Uh, which is my only one because um, <laughs> I still have not been able to knit my own. I also hate ribbing. I do. But I was I was wearing it yesterday. Was it yesterday? I texted yeah. you yesterday. And I was like, I am so happy. Like, I feel this hug. I really the do. And I wore it the entire... Because I put it on to go get my kids because it was cold. And then I didn't take it off. Like, when I got home, I just was like... <gasps> yeah. Aww. There's something so tactile about this. And yeah. all of the Saturday shrugs that I have knit... Um, well, the, the, I have two that I wear really often, um, that are knit out of Newtonin and they, I love them, but this, which is like, you know, mm. a two ply held double and not yes. in the unspun, like this, the spun characteristic of it, like makes the hug huggier. It looks, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's thicker. It's thick. It's a dense. It, like it's dense. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. And there is a part of me that's like, dang, I wish that um, I could have knit the cinch, like the, her new pattern where it like comes in a little bit more. I think I, I think it would look so good. Couldn't you, if you did, well, you'd have to make the decision, right? But you'd have to take out the bottom. Wouldn't you just like, I don't, I have no and... idea. I think I would actually have to knit it all over again, which I'm obviously not going to do because this no. makes me happy, but like kind of does it on its own. But I think, um, Jackie's made it so it's my more... spin a flock, <laughs> make the cinch and then give it to me. <laughs> Is Isn't that like magic needles? I thought you didn't want magic needles that knit things for you. I don't. <laughs> but you were correct that there are certain things that I don't want to do. That you want That's the That's a lot of ribbing. It oh, went by really quickly, honestly. What's the needle size? 10. Okay. Yeah, maybe. And I think, you know what, what was super fun about this from a process point of view was like, feeling the different fleece yes. texture but they really it is really quite amazing like it's so consistent jackie you did a great job like you really would like they really are pretty right not, so the fleece texture is different but your actual size i think that's a product that's of good. holding it double though mm. i think because i held it double it um and that and that was part of the reason why i didn't want to i was like what happens if i have 10 separate skeins then it's going to come out super stripey like i wanted that yes. sort of overlap and i love like doing this and feeling the different texture and have having like definite preferences around oh i love this fleece and, yes. and you know that makes um, sense and i'm really what i'm really amazed about because when i initially did it the icelandic fleeces are sort of uh darker uh -huh. are the icelandic fleeces and i was like do i want the icelandic fleece sort of more in the sensitive right. area but i don't know if it's something about like you know this um this particular flock of sheep mm -hmm. the these particular icelandics that have fleece that grow in a particular way but i have worked with Lopi and let Lopi, and i find that rustic mm -hmm. um but this was not rustic to spin it doesn't, it doesn't feel it when feel i put it on it didn't rustic. feel rustic like it's no. i mean it's it's not merino but it's real like there's 
I have no challenge with it at all. Yeah. And there's another Icelandic that I've spun at a very low twist um, that to me is also, I'm like, this does not feel like Let Lopi or yeah, um, Alpos Lopi yeah. or Pelotu Lopi or even the like Thingborg Lopi. Yes. It, it's like spinning all, all breeds are not made the same. Yes. And then all, like, I don't think that you could say all Icelandics feel like this. I agree. You really, like, there is, like, this fleece versus that 100%. fleece and how it's processed and how it's, like, all the things. And it's really kind of amazing. too, right? Yeah. So there's that additional thing, too, like, how much of the top coat, I don't know, like, how it's all included. Maybe yeah, the outer layer, the inner exactly. layer. Tall, um, towel or whatever. Oh. I have to say, though, um, maybe you... I needed to put on a, like something before I pulled it over my face because I'm like all I have everywhere. is fluff. Like I'm like it's in my <laughs> eyes, it's like it's everywhere, and I can feel my body starting to be like, what's happening? <laughs> Too much fluff. Yeah. Much fluff. So maybe if I put something, paper towel, and then <laughs> paper then. towel. Not. You know what I've seen people do a silk scarf. Oh well, that's a little more classy. That's very. I was like, <laughs> it's a little oh, better than my so paper brilliant. towel. Like, um, it was somebody who had curls. And didn't want to like mush their curls. I oh, think. that's smart. I was like, that is so smart. Like, do I have a silk scarf to just like throw over my head? Yeah. Um, I don't know why I I didn't like collect as much fluff as you did. You got it in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I took care of it. Sorry, I think I just pulled it the wrong way. Yeah, no, in my eyes, I'm like, whoa, I can feel it. Like everywhere. Yep. Um, okay, I have one more thing to show, and then do you want to do color play, or should we do color play and not show the other thing? Well, so kind of as you, thing. yeah, do the other thing. I'm just paying attention to, to you because I have, we have like 20 minutes. Okay. Because <laughs> I have my other job as a parent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, I also, teachers don't want to wait extra. I also, um, I, I feel like you're going to be angry with me when I pull this out. Oh, well, I should have, I should have said no. No, no, no. What is this? What is this? <gasps> yeah, I mean, I knew it was already happening. I, I just, I love how you didn't even mention it earlier mention it when I was talking about colors. Okay. Yeah, you were self. like, you mean the square? I'm this like, yeah. Is, yeah, that one. Like the Soho Square by Jackie Rose. This is unbelievable. In um, Sandra Yarn Co. <sighs> Surrey Alpaca. Was this the one days. of her combos or did you do this? Oh, we talked about this. Did we talk about this? Yeah. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So somewhere in the back of your mind, you knew this was happening. I did. I blocked it out. Um, so this is my oh. Soho Square. It's perfect. The colors are oh. right. Oh. Exactly. Mm. The colors mm. are Fen, Grand Ballet, Fleur, and Limoncello. I can't even. And um, I did put this together. Uh, with some, I put it together and then I sent it to Melissa and was like, is this going to be a disaster? And she's like, no, I like it. And I was like, okay, well, good. you can get her. Yes. And she, she put her stamp on it. Oh my God. Um, oh my God. I, so I stayed up irresponsibly late last night to get this done because I was so excited to show it. <laughs> you, like, <joy laughs> switch. I so I haven't quite figured out how to style it yet. But she has a million ways. She has a million ways. That's so beautiful. So I have to like play, that, play around with it. That's beautiful. Um, so this, so remember I was like, okay, so I was working on the tessellated. I was working on the euros. Yes. And then there was a third thing that I was working on. And the third that thing was, was this. this. Because like cables are fun, but they also like require, like, like it you engages attention. your hands in a particular way. Yes. Right. And yes. I think I was also like ribbing and also on the sleeve and small circumference and the tessellated, I was knitting on a US three and the ribbing, corrugated ribbing, I was knitting on a US one. And I was just like, I need something that is just delectable and easy. And I had forgotten because I was knitting all these stockinette sweaters. I'd forgotten, like normally I have a half and half. I know you always going do. all the time. Yes. And I was knitting the fleur, which um, is garter. But like I, I'm not sure if I love anything as much as I love garter. Yes. Um, so mm. this was just an absolute joy. It is unbelievable to touch and it. The the proportion, like mm -hmm. she is so she's smart. genius. Like the proportion of where the stripes go. Oh, I love it. Well, and she amazing. used the magic ratio, right? Yeah, like, that's how she decided. It's so amazing how we love. Yeah, like the eye just loves the thing. Yes. I mean, I I oh, I, I just finished it. 
I, I, I do love you the color. You don't like it and you want to give it to me because you're not sure about the color? Is that what you're I'm about like, to say? I'm like, I'm not sure if I, like, ah. I love it. When I look at Jackie's, ver Jackie Rose's I versions, love, well, she's, yeah. There's one what I that. noticed, there's a particular, ver what I noticed about her versions is, um, like, this was an interesting study of color and color value. Yeah. Right? Because I think with Jackie's, most of them, like, I, I haven't actually taken a black and white photo, but I'm sure that when I take a black and white photo, there's a big contrast between this color and this color. Yeah. Whereas in Jackie's, like, mm. the, there isn't that much contrast. And so yes. there's a part of me that goes, like, did I do the pattern, like, Justice. Justice in the sense because I sort of shifted the um Yes, yes, I see the what you're saying. Contrast this one stands out. Right? Yes. At the same time, I adore I these colors. It. I love it. I don't think it's I don't think you can go wrong. That was just one way that she's done it. Right? But she has so um, many, right? Yeah, she has so many. What I love about it, um, in the end is I love if I'm gonna wear it as a triangle, I love that it's like there's like a spring side. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm hmm And then there's like a fall side and somehow it still works. It sure does. Like That has a summer vibe to me actually. It feels like you're like in, you're gonna go surfing. Like, I'm calling it my transition shawl because I feel like it just, it was so fun to knit. It's beautiful. And I, you know, there's a lot, there's been a lot said about, you know, like for example, I feel like the half and half triangles wrap was not a join it for you because it was just endless garter. It was very, it was long. It but was very big too. This one. This seems like a better size. This one, um, because you've added the stripes. Yeah. It's like, it's like the, it, it's like the moment that you start to think, oh, how many rows do I have left? You're like at a stripe. Oh. And you're at the, the other stripe. Like it just has the most wonderful rhythm. Mm -hmm. I think the color play is amazing. Um, and how it feels. It is really. Like. <sighs> To have surrey alpaca silk just running through your fingers mm. is the most joyous thing in the world. Mm. And M Melissa's color, like I just had so much fun. And it's a shawl. And so I can mm. be as adventurous with the color as I want to be. Oh yeah. And I'm pretty happy That's with it. Do. I like, so Jackie has all of the, Jackie Rose has all of these like, like a whole video on how to like on how wear to style it, it which stuff. I like she didn't like have does, to doesn't she do some kind of she like does some sort of head hat thing hat. like but of course I'm gonna like not look at all like she does I don't know I don't know it's but just like I I haven't had I didn't have time to play with it but I do think that it is it, it has endless play because you can do the colors like differently yeah um, yeah like and I, I don't have something thing. this shape now I will say um, in terms of yarn usage, I, I had, so the main colors, um, I had three grams left and two grams left of wow. the main color. So I was like, you know, Yikes. playing yarn chicken. Um, I knit it on a US five, one needle size down from what is in the pattern because I'm a loose knitter mm -hmm. and the dimensions of it, it came out like the, it came out larger than that's, than, this is larger. Yeah. This is larger. Which, just which because size of my is this? Cause she has, this is the Soho square. So she has the wink, the... which is the small one. Right. And then she has the square, which is the middle one. And then she has the wrap, which is that's one the, I think the one that is the same. Um, oh, is it the same? That's lens? the same. It's the same dimensions as the half and oh, half okay. triangle okay. wrap from Pearl Soho. So this is but the one that takes four. This is the one. It's four, four ske skeins. So um, just under fifty grams of the fen, just under fifty grams of Grand Ballet, and then um, twelve grams each of the Limoncello and the Fleur. Okay. But I'm pretty happy with the color. It's beautiful. Like. It's I, I think beautiful. it's going to take some time for me to get accustomed to myself in this color, maybe. Yeah. Like, it's maybe a little bit outside of my comfort time zone. Than you think, I bet. But I love it. Mm -hmm. And it just feels so lovely. It does. And there's like a wonderful drape. It also is, um, I knit a satellite shawl by yes, Andrew Mowry. Yes, me too. Um, in oh, a similar, oh, not a sweater. Not a sweater, in a stitch. similar color story. Mm -hmm. um, and that shawl ended up too big and it also ended up becoming the favorite like it was like the snug wherever i put it my cat would go and so i sort of Aww, like got co-opted by my cat 
Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's another story for another time. But um, I wanted to come back to those colors. Mm. So I sort of started here. And then for some inexplicable reason, I was like, maybe I should put in what I consider to be um, the perfect brown leather mm -hmm. in yeah. in yarn. You gotta just trust it. Um, yeah. So here it Beautiful. is. Beautiful. Beautiful. I just had a thought. I wonder how it would look if you didn't fold it along the line. That's what I was thinking. I think she, yeah. Does she do this? I think. Like, this is kind of cute if I'm feeling like I don't. Oh, yeah, there like, you go. Then you're more about the yeah, like, neutral. Yeah. But then you can also do this. It's so fun. It is so fun. I, I, and it's I a, feel it's like. It's a departure from you, you last year. Oh yeah, for gosh, sure. I'm sorry, people. I'm just, it's just fluff. Mohair just everywhere. Fluff everywhere. Yeah, you're well, this is like Surrey, right? Yeah, this is Surrey. Um, I, do, I just, you know, mm. whether you knit the Soho Square or not, I just think uh, I would like everybody to have the um, experience. Yeah of having the yes. Surrey alpaca shawl. I know. And there is I a know. part of me that's like maybe, that maybe wants the full wrap mm -hmm. in Surrey. Mm -hmm. Although that's where I got in trouble with my satellite shawl. It was just like it oh, over, when I first cast it off, I didn't wet block it because it was already like enormous. Oh, mine's too small. And then um, I swear over time, it just like got bigger and bigger. <laughs> so I'm like, we'll see if I actually need the fullness of another one, but it's beautiful. I'm proud of my color choices. You should be. Um, They're gorgeous. I think they worked in a way that's maybe a little bit unconventional for me, but it's lovely. That's the point of shawls. Oh, yes. Gorgeous. Um, okay. Now I'm finished. All of the, all of the finished objects. I told you. Thank God I went into my, like, my... <laughs> drawers <laughs> but you know what's really exciting for me right now i think i have the least number of whips oh, ever like in so maybe right now these so i have a blank slate like i feel i feel like mm. i have a blank slate mm -hmm. um like now that that's done i'm like oh i get to like cast on all the things and i'm resisting the temptation to do all of that now because i feel like i'm gonna I, there are all I these bet. things that i'm gonna want yes and then um one of the th like what I'm most excited about in terms of Ryan Beck is the people watching. Oh, hundred percent. Like I mean, yes, we're gonna you know, it's gonna be stuff. wonderful to um, experience and pet like fleeces and be mm -hmm. able to, as a Canadian, like in real life, see a lot of this um, yarn that is yes. less accessible to us um, this side of the border. But mm -hmm. I'm mostly super excited to just like people watch and like take stealth photos of people in their sweaters stealth so that... photos who like ryan beck doesn't want somebody coming up and <laughs> saying can i take a picture i'm just I go, gonna like, be aggressively uh, yes. like hi can i take a picture 100%. of your sweater and um, then you just be like oh my god thank you yes take so a picture in my beautiful sweater i feel like whatever i'm dream knitting right now and all the ideas that i have um that it's just gonna be completely yeah. like exploded yeah. um, by the time I get to Ryan Beck. I but think it's like, you know, we always are when we watch any of the podcasts yeah. and other people's podcasts and you're like, ah! suddenly the queue explodes, right? Yeah. This will be like that on like, ri like, like ridiculous. Yeah. Like Mach yeah. 4 um, level. Or, is that even a thing I might know? Mach, I don't know. Mach 4? Okay. <laughs> I was trying to think of something that wasn't like drugs. All I could think of was like on speed <laughs> or something. And I'm like, well, that's not very appropriate. Um, <laughs> But I said it anyway. <laughs> But what I really, what I do know that I want to knit or I want to cast on before the end of this year is the twig sweater by Junko Okamoto. I know you don't want to, and that's okay. I don't know if it's going to But I really want to. I have all the wool. I really want to, and I... You're going you're gonna to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, and Lily's... Is she doing hers? No. No, okay. No. Um, but it was my plan at the beginning in January that it was going to be like my epic knit and I feel like all my twigs energy went to the tessellated and now that that uh, energy is like freed up it's possible that I can um get moving on it get moving on the twigs maybe you're um, like winter solstice or something well to be fair I've cast on the twigs three times with three different right. kinds of yarn and it just wasn't working yeah and now I have now that I've landed on making it out of sounder yarn because you what did you, what's your combo? Oh, um, that, yes, that, this, that. right? Once Carmen showed this combo yes. for her twigs, I was like, what was I thinking? I clearly just need to go to Sondra Yarn and that should always be find a twigs combo. Mm -hmm. 
So next time we will pull out all of our saunter yarn because I basically bought one skein of most of, between, between, between the, the two yeah. of us, I would say that we've probably amassed we at most. least one third of the colorways. And so mm -hmm. we thought we will, maybe next episode we'll do some color play and you guys can help me pick my, um, my twigs colors because this is just so Carmen and I feel like it's gorgeous. Yes. It's not me. I have to find like my mix. Yes. I think we might have found Did it. Did we find it? Yeah. Don't you want to just show? Yeah. <laughs> so what I know, what I know is that I'm going to do a couple contrasts and these are the three contrasts oh, that I want to do. And so, um, the question is what, it, what's my main color going to be? Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about this cause I'm like just loving purple these days mm -hmm. and that purple and teal I love. So there's purple. a possibility. This is tickled catnap window shopping. And this is all in the Sunday morning line. Um, so this is one possibility. I was thinking about this mm -hmm. as a possibility, Ooh, which I kind of like. But then we landed on this. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So this one is. Which one is this? under the duvet or something? Under the duvet. Ritual. Dream state. Dream state? If you did do dream state, we would then be twinsies. True. Which would be nice, because that's my main. I do that like nice. this. That is gorgeous. We didn't have that one together. My vote is that one or... Uh... Not so much this one is. Full English, which I feel like I just want to like work a with. Cool, there's a coolness to these that I you want to stay with cool. Stay with cool. I, my I other so. contender was this one. French press. But I think, what do you guys think? Under the duvet? I would say that or dream state. Or dream state? Mm-hmm. Both of those are gorgeous. Not ritual? Not for me. I like these two together. Well, then do that. It's gorgeous. <laughs> you can't go wrong. <laughs> How many colors can one person get into a twigs? That's what we do. You just, you just stripe just it. Do <laughs> Sadly, that's not even all of them. There's more. There's more. I can get in my arms. Get that one too. This one. What should I do? Which combination? Wait a second. Where's the? Yeah. What was your originals again? These are the three. These three. We are terrible yarn salespeople. We're just like. How are we terrible? <laughs> we're, we're very good yarn buyers. We're very good yarn buyers. Like, but I mean, yeah. literally, you could palette. do any. I feel like you, you could do any combination, and it would be amazing. See, 100%. my low contrast self is currently freaking out about this. Like, maybe I should do this. This is not enough contrast for the twigs, but like, how gorgeous is this combination? Yeah, that's gorgeous. Like, oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, anyway, vote below, Melissa. Help. <laughs> Um, it's exciting to have, I feel like it's exciting for me to be in a place after all of this, like, like furious knitting, um, and lots of like creative energy sort of tied up in whips to kind of be in a place where it's like, I don't know. Open this. There is something, know, it's, it's such so a exciting. funny thing. There is something so beautiful about when you cast something off and you yeah. have that like, it's this like beautiful vacuum that gets yeah, something filled, like right? it feels like, like you just, expanded. You feel it's like there's it's like negative space, and yeah. then that you fill it. It's yeah, it's just really fun, but it's hard to decide. Yeah, well, there's just so much beauty out there, mm -hmm. and it, and it's it's the question of like what is the beauty that I need right Gosh. now? Well, Amy Christoffers just released also. I know that, another like, new, and I almost was like I gotta buy it because I'm gonna wear it. <laughs> I'm gonna make it. But then I'm like, no, Carmen, just wait, just wait. Like you've got a million things already. It'll always be there. I'm sure I'll make it down the way. But yeah. I'm not making it soon. It's just I so can... funny because I, I feel like sometimes I um I have this illusion that the thing that I cast on is the thing that I'm most excited about. Mm. But I don't actually think it's that simple. No. Because if we think about like the Euro sweater, I was excited about I've been so excited about the Euro sweater, and it's like why at this time, why did it take so long for it to land on my needles? Right. Do you know what I mean? It's just the timing. It's exactly. Like, why am I, it's this, not the Euros right now. For right? Me. Um, I love them both the same. And I'm looking at yours going, now I need it. Well, you'll have it. Eventually. 
eventually. Um, well, we should probably mm, let you go pick I up really your kids. I really do. I really do. Although do this, they? either that, like this one doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist, eh? I this this is really beautiful to me. I feel like the um, it's just the when you talk about value to me, like these things are, have the same feel. They all have like a gray undertone somehow that yeah. is just they just feel like they're. It's really like harmonious. Like I feel like there's there's like color, um, it's but okay. this pop, but like I feel like with this everything else pops. They do. You know what I mean? Which is maybe what you need in color work. I like see what to you're me, saying. that is like that's what I would gravitate towards. But yes. that and tends to be work. my thing with color work is that mm -hmm. I always go really low contrast and it looks really good together when I hold it like that. Mm -hmm. But then when it when you start to knit it. I feel like things get a little watercolory, which is like total. Mm -hmm. I like watercolory, right? Yeah, um, but there is mean. a part of me that's like, it's the twigs, it's fingering. There are You're the putting motifs a lot of work into it. are really delicate. Like it's like yes. they're like one to two stitch motifs. So you really like it's just one stitch. It's not like the pressed flowers where you yes. have the like a, a larger motif. That I wonder. This would almost be the square, to me. Like if these were your main ones and these were the stripes or something like this. Yeah. You're right. Like one of you the things, have to worry. One of the things that I intentionally did with this and I'm like, oh, is this, it is I was like, I want it to feel a little bit tense yeah. when I hold them all together. And I feel like when it's a little bit tense from a color work perspective, it comes out and it's so gorgeous. Whereas, you know, when, it, when you don't have that tension or that like... A little bit extra yeah I don't know if it comes out as nicely I think I can see where you're coming you know from those saying? fit so nicely but yeah if you took a picture yeah it'd be interesting I'll go and I'll okay. check the value but okay. oh god I just I don't know that combo is absolutely gorgeous to me that it one's was, that one has a, more of an edge to it it's like yeah yeah I think whether you want that I think personally I love this color me too as the main color more than I love this one yes that's right? true. I mean, I'm doing well if I ever make it. Yeah. <laughs> See. I mean, yours. Is, this is also gorgeous. <sighs> and it's just so Carmen. It's just me. Um, it's hard for me not to do the same thing over and over again. That's very you. It's very ballet. It's very ballet. Yeah. I yeah. I mean. Left to my own devices, I would knit a twigs like this, and then you wouldn't be able to see the bunch. <laughs> through the whole thing. I like, like, you can't see anything, but it's really nice watercolor <laughs> colors. Um, True. All right. All right. People, we need your input. We need your input. Please let us know. Under the duvet. I think it is down to those state. two. Per well, no, maybe. I mean, other people might be like, yeah. what? Get back to ritual. Obviously, it's ritual. That is very lovely. Yeah. There. They, they it's kind of well. interesting because it's like this I feel like when I hold ritual this one really pops yeah 100% makes that one really pretty when I hold this one they all kind they of do. pop they do and then when I hold this one they all sort of like calm down they calm down but they're also they I see each one yeah like There's I don't enough we don't lose any of them I feel like maybe that No, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so maybe. Are these going to be close to each other? These, oh, sorry. It's okay. probably went right in your face. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, is this better? Um, I don't know. These, if they were beside each other, would be hard. I feel like those ones will get lost. Get lost. They, so um, in the pattern, it's, two, it's three right? colors. Yeah. Um, but Lily of Curatorial Knits, hers, which is ugh, absolutely gorgeous. She used five colors. And so that's where I sort of got the idea. And also in terms of the tessellated, like playing with more than three, mm -hmm. I think that, I think you're right. I think this one has to live, like if exactly. I'm combining it, it has to look like that. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, the more I look at this, the more I like it. I think that one's, I think this is fabulous, but I also like the dream state and we could be twinsies that way. Yeah, it's true. Too. But then you wouldn't have to knit it. Right. Yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> I think we both know I'm not going I think to. I, I think I I'm know that you're not going to knit else. it. I'll knit something else. You, it's like you I have the all tiny these pebbles instead. Stain. I've got four skeins of like that for an MC. I'm going to have to do it on something. Or you could just give them me. 
No, I love it. I want that. <laughs> this color combo has to happen. That color combo. Oh wait, did we do color? Color? this is my color combo? Were we doing that one? Oh or were we yeah, doing I don't know. One? Anyway, that's dream what state, free spirit, full English. Full English. That's oh. oh. Mm. Get a hat. Three. Do you, anybody have three color? A, a hat that's like a three color, or like an accessory. Maybe I'll make it. It can be surprising. It's true. I I I rule out nothing when it comes to you. <laughs> that is, Anything. Is I possible. don't even know. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. All right. Okay. I definitely have to go. We definitely need to go. Thank you All for right, hanging folks. out with us. Thank if you. If you are attending Rhinebeck, mm. um, please come say hi. Please. I don't know where we'll be. We'll be at Wool and Folk, and then we'll be at the New York Sheep and Wool. We'll just um, be the Canadians stunned, <laughs> going. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you're not um, attending Rhinebeck, um, we hope that we'll be able to bring little pieces of Rhinebeck um, yeah. back um, for you in our next podcast episode. Um, I do think that it's such a joy that we get to be somewhere to be inspired, mm. right? Like that's so full of inspiration. And I also... Um, I'm so grateful for this like community of like podcasters that sort oh of like God. bring inspiration to us and we don't ever need to like leave our homes. Yeah. Melissa has brought us so much inspiration. Um, so yes. we hope that you um, are enjoying your needles, that you don't have crazy deadlines, that you're loving what you're <laughs> knitting and that um, you're meeting all of the insane amounts of like inspirational input that comes with like sweater mm -hmm. weather or like, you know, spring weather or yes. um, just all of the pattern releases. We hope that um, it's making you excited and not overwhelmed. <laughs> or a combo. Or a combo. Overwhelmed is okay. Too, overwhelmed and excited at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, let us know what it is that you're excited about knitting, whether you're knitting it now or whether there's another pattern that's just like screaming out at you just to add to our co-inspiration and each other. Um, <clears throat> and help me choose a color, please. <laughs> All right. We love you. Love you. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>